Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just chilling by the fire, taking a look at my YouTube channel, and noticed that we managed to hit 1 million subscribers. Now, uh, this is the second time this year one of my channels has hit 1 million subscribers, which is insane. And I just wanted to take a second to say thank you guys. Like, from the bottom of my heart, since I was 8 years old, I've always wanted to be a YouTuber. And because of every single one of you guys, that's my job now. Like, I I'm a YouTuber. And obviously, that is just, like, the coolest thing ever. I get so excited like a giddy little kid every time I get to tell people that my job is a YouTuber. And hitting a million subscribers is a massive milestone, all right? I get a gold plaque, but most importantly, it means that, like, I'm making videos that you guys like. My biggest goal as a YouTuber is to make you guys entertained, all right? Sometimes I mess up, sometimes I might not be the best, but my goal is to make every one of your guys' days better because, uh, believe it or not, as corny as it sounds, you guys make my day better. Like, every day getting to wake up and entertain you guys is far and away the greatest job I could ever ask for, and it means the world that a million of you guys like me enough to subscribe. So, from the bottom of my heart, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for the support. It really does mean the absolute world to me, and I can never thank any of you guys enough. Obviously, I've got more stuff coming for a million subs. I didn't expect to hit it this morning, so I was, like, planning to get stuff done. So, the next couple videos are probably gonna have giveaways and stuff for a million subscribers, so be on a lookout for that. But uh, today, you know, I figured I would do the world a service and put all of the Karen Saga videos into one video. Karen, without a doubt, as much as she was a psycho neighbor, made my channel. Like, I'm pretty sure at least half of you guys come from Karen videos. So I figured the least I could do to symbolize, you know, my growth, passing a million subscribers, would be to put all of those videos, like all 12 of them together, into one massive movie format. So, uh, yeah, that's gonna be the video for today, guys. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. My name is Ryan, the million subscribed YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. If you are, you gotta press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. This kid's mom will hunt you down and try to force feed you spaghetti until your lower intestine implodes. Yeah, that's right, guys. The mom we're gonna be talking about today is actually insane. So, uh, I would watch out, be very careful, because if you're not, she will force feed you spaghetti until your lower intestines explodes. Also, can we take a moment to admire my new knives, all right? They're pretty, they're blue, and, uh, they're, they're very, very, very attractive. Anyways, you know, uh, for those of you guys who haven't been watching for a while, I live on my own now, and my house is in this neighborhood, <laughs> obviously, you know, I don't know why I feel like I need to explain that. My house is in a neighborhood. Nah, nah, I own all of Nevada. It's just my house here. Anyways, my house is in a neighborhood, and uh, I don't know how the rumor got out or whatever, but kids in the neighborhood know that I'm scrubby and I live at this house, you know? They are zoned at the same school as my brother, so I don't know if my brother told him or if they just figured it out, they, like, saw me outside. I don't know, but some kids figured out that I'm scrubby. So the neighborhood kids know that I'm scrubby, and, you know, th they'll knock on the door every now and then and make a dumb joke, take a picture, whatever. Like, I don't hang out with the neighborhood kids, but they know that I'm scrubby, they know I'm a YouTuber, and they know that I live here. And, uh, most of the parents in the neighborhood know that I live here and that I'm a YouTuber, too. I've had pretty cool conversations. Most of the parents are, uh, pretty chill, you know? They're like, oh, that's really cool, that's so awesome that you're so successful so young. Like, generally, it, it's not awkward, nothing's too weird about it. Most of the kids and I are pretty, pretty chill. I don't see them often, but when I do, it's like, hey, what's up, how you doing? Nothing too crazy. But there's this one kid in my neighborhood who I'm gonna name Kevin, you know? And Kevin, Kevin's got it a little bit rough, all right? And, uh, Kevin's probably the nerdy kid in the neighborhood who most people don't hang out with, and the only reason I know that is literally every other kid is always outside hanging out, riding bikes, having a good old time, you know, playing Fortnite together, I, I don't know, probably, but, uh, Kevin is always inside, not hanging out with anyone, studying, doing homework, whatever nerdy kids do these days, and the main reason for that, this poor kid is the son of a Karen. Yeah, that's right, guys, this mom has the let me talk to your manager haircut in the attitude to boot. Like, his mom is actually psychotically Karen. I have never met a more Karen person in my entire life. Like, if, if let me speak to the manager was a person, it would be this kid's mom. And this poor kid has to deal with his mom constantly embarrassing him, constantly yelling at people, constantly making no one want to be friends with them. And, and I'm sure the kid's not a bad kid, you know, I've, I've only interacted with him once or twice. But growing up with a Karen as a mom has to be arguably one of the roughest childhoods you could ever experience. Like, growing up on 
the street and homeless is probably better than having to live with a Karen. And just to give you guys an idea of how Karen this guy's mom is, when I first got my house, I parked my car, and uh, it, they're literally across the street from me, so I've had some interactions with Karen, and she comes outside and asks me if I live here, and I'm like, well, yeah, I just bought the house. And she proceeds to say, no, you didn't, and calls the cops. Yeah, that's right. The cops had to come and verify that I own the house, and, uh, it's my house. So, way to go, Karen. Wow, you're so incredible. Called the cops on a kid in front of his own house because he didn't believe it was his. But that's the type of Karen we're dealing with here. Um, that's actually a whole nother story. If this video gets 10k likes within the first day of it being up, I will tell the story of Karen calling the cops on me because it's a saga. But, you know, that Karen is just, just next level Karenhood. And, uh, I guess my brother was talking to Kevin one day at lunch or something and he mentioned that he's a huge fan of my videos. And uh, my brother kind of told him, well, he lives right by you. And Kevin's like, yeah, I know. I've seen him outside a couple times. My mom called the cops on him. And my brother's like, well, I'm sure he doesn't have any beef with you. He's a pretty chill dude. So, like, you could go knock on his door, like, get a picture with him or whatever. It's no big deal, right? So after school that day, Kevin knocks on my door and he's like, hey, can I take a picture? I'm a big fan. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, we take a picture. I'm talking to him for maybe, like, two minutes. We were literally, I was asking how his day was. It was just a normal conversation. And his mom pulls up and is like, is there a problem here? And I'm like, oh, no. Um... Uh, no, no. And she's like, Kevin, what are you doing here? And I knew his mom was a Karen, so I didn't snitch, and I wasn't like, hey, I'm a YouTuber, your son watches my videos, because that's not what I wanted. But Kevin goes, oh, he's a YouTuber that I watch all the time, and, uh, I don't know, I just really like his videos, so I figured I could come take a picture, because, I don't know, I just kind of look up to his channel. And she gives me the dirtiest look, and she's like, don't you think it's weird that this kid knocked on your door because he likes your videos? And I was like, well, yeah, kind of a little bit. Uh, maybe he shouldn't knock on my door. It's not like... What, what do you want me to do? No, kid, go away. You support my channel and make my dreams reality. Suck it and slam the door in his face. Like, I I'm sorry, Karen. I wasn't going to punch your son in the throat for being a fan of mine. But uh, whatever. The mom kind of like bickers back and forth with me about how I, I shouldn't answer the door. I don't really know what she was telling me. I shouldn't take pictures with the kids who are my fans. I, I don't know. Something along the lines of uh, it's inappropriate for me to take pictures with kids that are my fans. But I, I don't know. I, I don't think that's weird. Maybe I'm in the wrong, all right? Maybe I'm in the wrong, whatever. But uh, she kind of, like, pulls Kevin back to the house, and I'm like, all right, well, Kevin is never going to see me again, whatever. Karen's going to keep me in a stupid Karen, you little dumpster-diving little baby whore. But uh, whatever. I'm, I'm not too pressed. If Karen doesn't like me, Karen doesn't like me. I don't really care. I'm going to keep doing me. But anyways, a couple of days later, I get a knock on my door, like a furious pounding of knocks on my door. Like, like an angry knock. Like, I think I might be getting swatted when I'm going to the door. I'm like, great, here we go. The SWAT team's gonna surround me. It's not gonna be a good time. And I open the door, and standing there is a very, very angry-looking Karen. And she basically barges into my house, like, pushes by me, and just starts yelling. And I'm like, okay, first of all, come on in. You know, the water's fine. Welcome to my humble abode, Karen. It's the same house as yours. Can I help you? So, she's screaming, and the first thing out of my mouth is, Hello? What, what is going on? She's like, you need to delete your channel this instant. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she says, I watched some of your vile videos, and I can't believe you tell those stories on the internet. I will get it taken down. You need to take down your channel right this instant. It is not a good, good role model for Kevin. And I'm like, well, um... I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm not deleting my channel. It's my job. That's how I make money. And she's like, you need to take it down. It is a bad influence for children. I cannot believe that that vile filth is allowed online. And listen, you know, I've, I've said some weird stories on the internet. I don't feel like I've ever said a story time that that's vile and disgusting to warrant this type of response. Like, I, I'm sorry. I feel like my story times are pretty tame. You know, go watch Channel Manju and then come watch me. And I'm like, hey, kids, welcome to PBS. You know, I, I don't feel like I'm that extreme but whatever Karen is up in my face yelling at me about how I'm a bad influence and I need to delete my channel so I explain it again I'm still calm at this point I'm like hey it's my job I don't really care what you think people enjoy it you're the first parent I've ever had screaming at me to delete my channel because I'm a bad influence if your kid is doing what I do then just tell him to stop you know you can make him not watch my videos it's not my fault that you think your kid shouldn't watch them and she's like no you need to take it down I will call the police and I'm like oh, what are the police gonna do the police aren't gonna make me delete my channel and she's like because uh, 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 I think she realized that the police aren't going to make me delete my YouTube channel like how would that 911 call go hey uh, this is Karen 
Um, there's a kid with a YouTube channel that I don't like. I need every video taken down immediately. 911, we need to nuke his channel from the internet. He is a bad influence for children. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. No joke, no joke. Um, one time, he said a naughty word, and Susan demonetized him. Yep, yep. Oh my gosh, yeah, send the SWAT team. Let's arrest him immediately. I cannot believe that this kid is a YouTuber. Can you believe it, officer? Absolutely disgusting, despicable. So, she proceeds to tell me, and I quote, I cannot believe such filth is allowed on YouTube. She said it like 90 times at this point, and I will be contacting my lawyer to get your channel taken down. And I'm like, all right, all right, Karen, fine. You know what? Contact your lawyer, sue me. Something tells me anyone with a legal degree is going to be like, you're a moron. You can't get someone sued and get their channel deleted because you don't like their videos. But uh, whatever, Karen's the type of girl to ban D&D &D because she feel like it's gonna make her kid turn into a devil or whatever. So at this point, she's like, where's your computer? I'll delete it myself. And uh, I, I, I'm losing it at this point. This lady's screaming at me saying she's gonna delete my channel. So I say, Karen, ahem, get the f out. But I didn't blurp it out, all right? I told her to get out. She's like, how dare you swear at a woman? I'll be back, I'll be back. I will call YouTube, I'll call YouTube. And I was like, you know what? If you get a person at YouTube, please let me know because there's a lot of things I need to tell them too. All right, Karen, you stupid, you stupid whore, dude. Just get out of my house. So whatever. Karen leaves, and I think that's going to be the end of it. But sure enough, the next day, there's another knock on my door, and Karen and her husband are standing there. And the husband's like, hey, can you please delete your channel? It's really making my wife upset. So uh, Karen is obviously standing there like she pulled the trump card. Yes, you know, your husband's going to magically make me delete my job. You, you got me. And I, I kind of tell him, no. You know, it's my livelihood. I explained to him how YouTube works. I explained to him how he can prevent his son from watching my videos. I explained this all to him, and he's like, okay, thank you. I'm sorry. And, and the husband's being a pretty chill dude. I don't know how him and Karen are married because he's like, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Yeah, we can just prevent him from watching your videos. No, no, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, this should have been avoided, blah, 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 blah. And, and as he's slowly kind of jumping onto my side about where I'm like, dude, I'm not going to delete my channel. Just make your kid not watch my videos. Karen realizes that she's not winning this and starts freaking out, demanding that I show, show, show her husband my vile filth. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I pull up a, a scrubby video, the main channel videos, and I show him one. And I'm like, yeah, I just kind of make fun of stuff. And he's like, oh, I don't think that's that bad of an influence. And the look on his wife's face when he says he doesn't think it's that bad of an influence is insane. So whatever, she grabs him and, and, and yanks him out of the house. And she's like, how dare you? We will get your channel taken down. Yeah, Karen, you're doing a fantastic job trying to get my channel deleted. I am currently shaking in my boots while uh, enjoying Susan demonetizing every video I upload. So the real kicker of this all, I'm sure you're asking, how does Karen somehow get stupider? The next day, there's another knock on my door, and I look out the peephole, and I see Karen running back to her house full speed. So, I open the door, and there's a letter there, and I open it, and she had written a fake letter as Susan Wojcicki, the CEO of YouTube, demanding that I delete my channel for disrupting the peace of the neighborhood. Yeah, that's right, Karen. I'm sure you, in the suburbs of Las Vegas, have enough clout to get the CEO of YouTube herself to write me a letter to take down my channel. I don't understand if she thinks I'm a three-year-old or somebody who can't read, but regardless, Karen, you did a very bad job convincing me to delete my channel. So obviously, I know this letter is a fake. So I just kind of open it, read it on my porch. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Susan Wojcicki wants me to delete my channel. Oh no. And then I flip off the house and I just go inside and close the door because I'm not playing games anymore. All right, Karen, you, you can like mess around and play play neighborhood police officer all you want. I don't really care. It's whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, the second you start writing fake CEO letters, you just look like a psychotic monkey. But ladies and gentlemen, it somehow gets worse. Yes, yes, that's right. Karen realizing that her fake letter to me did not get my channel deleted. I was not suddenly moved to tears while simply crying at the fact that I have become a YouTube pariah and Karen herself wants my channel deleted. No, no, I didn't care. Uh, in fact, I just kind of thought it was funny that this lady was so obsessed with my YouTube channel. So, whatever, she takes to shaming me to get me to delete my channel. She figures that if all the neighborhood turns against me and none of them want their children watching my videos, then somehow I will miraculously have 
have to delete my channel. Yeah, that's right, guys. If everyone in the neighborhood, all, all 400 people don't like my videos, suddenly my 1.3 million subscriber channel and my second channel with over 100,000 subs immediately ball into ash. There is nothing that there that will ever exist again because the neighborhood no longer likes my content. So she uh, makes a Facebook post basically insinuating that I am corrupting the children and that I need to be banned from the neighborhood. Like, yeah, they're going to make me sell my house because I make YouTube videos. And uh, the comments on Facebook backfire immediately. Like, the other parents in the neighborhood are like, can you leave the poor kid alone? I've watched his videos. They're harmless. Like, please, please find something to do with your life. It, it backfires entirely. Everybody else in the neighborhood knows me as, like, the, the nice guy who, like, I, I don't know. I just kind of keep to myself. I don't cause any problems. I don't throw wild parties. Uh, my videos are pretty tame as far as everything goes. Like, let's be honest here. The truth of the matter is, my videos are really tame compared to a lot of YouTubers. And Karen, I know you're watching this. Um, I hope you understand that I didn't leak your name for a reason. I could have dropped your full name because you're kind of harassing me and I wouldn't have felt bad about it. But I kept it a secret because I don't want your nice husband and your nice kid to suffer for you being a pathetic wench. But whatever, I digress. So here I am on Facebook reading these comments of everybody being like, leave the kid alone. Holy cow, this is like borderline harassment. We don't want to kick him out of the neighborhood. He's a fine neighbor. It, you know, like it's not the end of the world. Please just chillax. And Karen starts dropping paragraph responses to each and every one of these people, basically trying to argue with them that the internet should be banned for all kids under the age of 13 because it's corrupting them. Karen is looking like a full-blown psychopath at this point. And everybody just kind of stops replying to the thread and I've had neighbors come up to me since and be like I am so sorry about her the rest of the neighborhood does not feel that way like all of us think your job is cool you keep to yourself you're a nice kid don't let this crazy woman make you think that the rest of the neighborhood hates you. I promise it's fine. And it's gotten to the point where there was like a neighborhood pool party last week and I got invited and they just invited the husband and the kid and told Karen that she couldn't come. Like, that's how unpopular Karen has made herself with the neighborhood over the fact that a YouTuber just happens to live a couple houses down. So, uh, Karen, way to go. 500 IQ play. You made your neighbors hate you. But on that note, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would appreciate you guys pressing the like button letting me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video today's notification shout out goes to the one the only the absolutely indestructible Jose Mart 2006. What what a G, man. You were born in 2006, but your spirit is strong. Uh, don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. Like I said, if this video gets more likes, I have more stories about Karen, and I'll keep you guys updated on this one. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. 911 will be over at your house temporarily to arrest you for not pressing like on the best video you're ever going to watch. Yeah, that's right, guys. No joke. If you don't press the like button, then uh, you will be arrested and charged with not enjoying entertainment. I don't make the rules. I just follow them. But I would be very careful because the police are on standby making sure you press the like button. So I promised yesterday that if you guys liked the video about uh, Karen trying to, you know, get my channel deleted, that I would tell you guys the story of how she tried to get me arrested and uh, you guys obviously smashed that like goal because you guys are absolutely insane. So here is your reward. Um, before we get into it though, I just want to ask a quick question. I I'm kind of getting bored of surf gameplay. If you guys want me to do a Minecraft Let's Play in the background, obviously I'd be telling a story uh, over the Minecraft gameplay, but like, if you guys want me to start a new survival world and uh, just record it for however long the video is just let me know because I feel like that would actually be kind of fun and we would have a good time doing it but yeah without further ado let's get into the Karen trying to get me arrested for uh, existing in my own home I don't I don't really know what I did wrong to Karen but for some reason she's just got some beef with me so for those of you guys who don't know I actually got my own house uh, four or five months ago at this point I don't really know how long I've been here exactly I'm sure if I like really thought and tried to remember I could but I, I've been in my new house for four or five months now meaning I'm still relatively new to the neighborhood and uh, you know I guess the house that I bought was on sale for a while in fact it was I got a good deal on it but regardless you know I I, I guess I'm, I'm new to the neighborhood people didn't know me it's kind of weird that a 20 year old kid has his own house I'm not gonna lie I'm sure it looked a little bit fishy that I was pulling up to this house every day that had been uh, empty for so long 
but like I said, I got the house. I went around right when I moved in and introduced myself to all my neighbors, and uh, a lot of them were really, really cool. I get along with 90% of my neighbors really, really well. Most of them are pretty chill. All the neighborhood kids know I'm a YouTuber. Like, for the most part, I have a pretty good time with my neighbors. Not all of them are massive jerks that I want to punch in the nose, except for Karen. But there's this one neighbor named Karen, and she lives across the street from me, and uh, she, for some reason, just did not like me. Like, when I went over to introduce myself, she thought I was lying and trying to get information from them. Like, when I knocked on her door, she answered it and said, sorry, we don't want to buy anything, and slammed it in my face. So, I knocked again, and she answered more irritatedly and was like, we don't want to buy anything. And I was like, hey, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just moved in across the street, and I wanted to say hi. So, uh, her first impression was slamming the door in my face because I was trying to sell her something. So, you know, we definitely did not start off on the right foot. I don't know why. And uh, ever since, she would just kind of stare at me whenever I went anywhere, and she would always, like, give me dirty looks. So, regardless, one day I'm coming home from the grocery store or something. I don't really know where I was, but I pull into my driveway, and I'm getting out of my car. And as I'm getting out of my car, I see her, I just hear over the, my shoulder, Hey, 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 wait up, wait up, wait up, wait a minute. But it's, like, frantic. Almost like uh, someone's in trouble or, like, someone needs help with something. So I'm kind of looking around, not knowing where I'm looking, and then I see Karen coming out of her front door and walking over to me with, like, this, this Karen liberal mom sass, you know, like, I'm gonna talk to the manager sass in her step, and she gets up to me, and she goes, I don't think you're my neighbor, I don't think you own this house, I think you're squatting, and we're gonna get to the bottom of this right now, and I'm like, well, it's my house, I, I don't really know what you want me to do, but, like, I, I'm sorry, but, uh, I do, in fact, live here, like, she didn't believe that I lived here, I don't know what your problem is, I don't know if you have nothing else better to do than sit outside and stare out your window to make sure that people live here, but I promise you that I live in this house, and she's like, no, you don't, I don't know how you got into this house, but I promise promise you that you won't be here for long. We don't appreciate squatters in this neighborhood. How dare you break into somebody's home? And I'm like, lady, I live here. I know you might not like it. The house is mine. I am not doing anything illegal. There's literally nothing going on here that's illegal. So then this weirdo wackadoodle Karen of a neighbor says this. Well, I don't know how you afforded a house because you never leave your house. I've been watching you and seeing what you do every day. Uh, excuse me, that that's supposed to make me trust you and be like, oh, you're right, you are totally correct that I'm breaking the rules. Like, let's say I did break into this house. You really think a soccer mom up in my face saying that she's been watching me is going to make me afraid? Like, wow, Karen, what are you going to do, call the cops? So I'm like, first of all, it is very weird that you're watching me. Like, what do you mean you're watching me? Do you don't understand how creepy that is? She's like, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I keep an eye on this neighborhood to keep it safe and I can't believe that you would squat how did you afford a house if you don't have a job and so I'm like well I work on the internet I didn't tell her I had a YouTube channel because obviously she's up in my face screaming at me the last thing I want to do is talk to this girl more I'm like I work from home it's none of your business what I do I live here and I try to walk away and go into my house and this Karen grabs my arm and says no you're not going anywhere it's not your house I can't believe you would disrespect this neighborhood all right sorry I didn't know uh, your neighborhood was your country all right, like I didn't know I was breaking the rules by walking into my house. My bad, Karen. I'm so sorry that you felt disrespected in your neighborhood. Maybe, maybe if you weren't so much a wackadoodle, your husband wouldn't be cheating on you with the secretary. All right, Karen. So I go to walk away again, and she goes, "That's it. I'm calling the police." And I'm like, "All right, Karen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, is that a weed? Call 911. Whatever. Like, call the police. Fine. You psychotic monkey." So she calls the cops, and the cops, like, she's explaining it on the phone. Okay, and and I'm listening to her explain it and she's like hello I have a kid breaking into a house he's squatting he's being disrespectful okay being disrespectful is it against the law number one two I tried to be nice and then you like grab my arm and accused me of being like a, a drug dealer or something because I don't go to work like I, I don't know what to tell you so whatever the cops obviously are in a rush because they have some frantic lady screaming that someone's breaking into a house like it doesn't sound like what it is so the cops pull up and I'm just kind of sitting on the curb and she's like look look do you see him over there and like I can see her pointing she goes up to talk to the cops first and she's talking to them and pointing at me and like snickering and I can't believe it like I can hear bits and pieces and she's like and he doesn't have a job you need to check his house for drugs da, 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 da. and the cops are kind of like okay 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 so finally the cop walks over to me and he's like hey man can you tell me what's going on so I explained to him the situation very calmly I'm like hey I just moved in here I can show you all the paperwork it's still right on my desk I've literally been here for like three weeks I work online that's why I don't leave the house very often I don't know what she's on about you guys are more than welcome to walk through my house and, and verify that I don't have any drugs like I promise you guys can look like I don't know what her deal is dude I live here I legally own the house I don't know what she's on about and the cops like okay well 
can can I can you see the paperwork? I'm like, yeah. Do you want to come with me or do you want me to bring it out? And he's like, um, okay. Can I come with you? I'm like, yeah, no problem, sure. So I take him in the house. I show him the paperwork. He's like, okay, okay, okay. You're kind of young to own a house, and I was like, yeah. I explain to him what I do. I mentioned to him I'm a YouTuber. He's like, oh, okay, got you. My kids love YouTube. I understand. That's really cool. Um, give me like me and my partner a couple minutes to round this up, right? So I'm kind of sitting back on the curb again, just kind of sitting, doing nothing, and and she starts walking up to me and yelling that I'm gonna get arrested and there's no way I'm getting away with this. Blah 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 blah. And the cops come up to her, they're like, lady, leave the kid alone, we're handling it, the police are here, let us handle the accusations and arresting if anything's gonna happen, alright? It's not your job, Karen, go back over there. And she's like, hmm, fine. And she, like, gives me this look like I I'm in trouble or something. And whatever, a couple minutes later, the cops walk back up to me and they're like, hey, you know, you're good to go, everything checks out, you're fine, A1. Um, I don't know what this crazy lady problem is, he didn't say crazy lady, he basically insinuated, if you have any more problems with your neighbor, uh, just let us know. We're gonna put this as a low priority, meaning that if she called the cops on me again, then like, the likelihood of them coming was very low. The cops were not gonna be waiting to come spring a, uh, a SWAT team on little boy Scrub Scrub, okay? So, whatever, they leave, and she is pissed that I'm not getting arrested. She's like, how dare you, yada, 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 and the cop is like, okay, lady, he, he, he bought the house, it's his, I don't know what you want me to do, I don't know, maybe contact the former owner, uh, it's the kid's house, I can't kick him out of the house, and she's like, it's fake paperwork, the paperwork is fake, but the cop's like, look, it's legit. I don't know what you want me to do. He didn't do anything wrong. He's not being loud. He's not being rambunctious. In fact, he's been quite a bit nicer than you to us tonight. So maybe you should go back in and think about what you did and ask yourself why you called the cop on a kid who did nothing wrong. So uh, the cops leave and the lady is just absolutely flabbergasted that I am not sitting behind bars for something that I didn't do. Like in her head, I think she wanted the cops to find something I did wrong. They'd be like, oh, your brake light's out. You're going to spend the next 87 years in prison. But I didn't do anything wrong. And like, listen, whenever I'm at fault, you guys know on this channel, I'll admit I messed up. I did something stupid. I, I definitely didn't do something the right way. I'm the first person to admit when I've done something wrong, I've done something wrong. I didn't do anything to this lady. From the first day she met me, she just hated me because I guess in her little world, if anyone is like doing anything in her neighborhood, it's disrespectful and trying to ruin her life or whatever. But Karen is just a psychopath and her poor kid, I feel so bad for the kid. So she has a kid named Kevin, who I guess watches my videos, and as you guys know yesterday, um, I, he, he kind of got in some trouble for watching my videos, but like, imagine growing up with this as your mom. Imagine looking outside your window, the cops are here, and she is yelling at your neighbor, who you know has done nothing wrong and been nothing but nice to you, for something that like, isn't even that big of a deal, and having to, having to sit there and just be like, oh my god, that, that's my mom. I, that's my mother. And uh, come to find out after this and talking to other neighbors, she is always like that with anyone. Basically, anytime someone's having any fun that's slightly out of order, she calls the cops and tries to get it shut down. Like, if you're throwing a pool party and your music's a little bit too loud, she's the lady that's going to call the cops and try to ruin the fun. So she's just a consistent wet blanket in the neighborhood. And uh, the rest of the neighbors were like, yeah, you know, she'll eventually get over you living here, but then she'll have a new problem with you. And I was like, no, that's ridiculous. Obviously, it wasn't. She ended up going crazy on me um, a couple Couple months later and you guys heard that story yesterday so I'm not gonna retell it but uh yeah this girl is actually nuts Karen if you're watching this because she does watch my videos uh, she's a, she's a mega fan actually I'm sure she has notifications on please leave me alone you psychopathic witch I, I promise you I'm not trying to do anything wrong but every time you do something crazy just understand I'm not moving and I'm gonna make money off of you being an idiot so actually egg my house do something crazy because trust me it, it's it's not hurting me it's helping me more than anything because it's funny, you know? I'm collecting all these life experiences of a crazy neighbor who I absolutely hate, and you are being pathetic on Facebook complaining about me living in your neighborhood. You're not going to win the fight. No one likes you, and that's the way it's always going to be, Karen. I know, I know you know who you are, but just remember... I'm not moving, so get used to me, ho. On that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you did, I would appreciate you guys pressing the like button, letting me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed. It's always fun to read your guys' comments. Today's notification shout-out goes out to the one, the only, illustrious, absolutely incredible, talented, low-key chaotic. Thank you so much for having notifications on. I really do appreciate you. If you want a notification shout-out, all you got to do is send me a DM on Instagram, at Scrubby, of 
you with a screenshot of uh, notifications on for this channel, and I will uh, shout somebody out every day. Yeah, that's basically what's going on, so thank you for having notifications on. On that note, guys, I'm going to go do something to piss off my neighbor. Hope you guys have an incredible day. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're not going to turn into a Karen, because trust me, that's a life that absolutely none of us want to have to lead. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an incredible day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press that like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. Um, I'm just gonna tell Karen your name. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to have to 1v1 Karen because uh, she actually might be the most savage person to ever exist. So press the like button or you and Karen are gonna have to fight. So for you people who don't know who Karen is, she's my neighbor who basically is the definition of a bored soccer mom. May I speak to your manager haircut having person, all right? Like if we were at the Area 51 raid, she would walk up to the guards and ask to speak to their manager just to try to get in. Like, she, she's a very entitled soccer mom who has nothing better to do than to complain about what everybody else is doing, you know? And, uh, I, I told stories earlier this week about how she wants to get my channel deleted and also told me that I don't live in my house. Like, she, she was trying to get me arrested and called the cops on me for coming home. Like, I, I don't really know what Karen was doing. But regardless, Karen just has a knack for not being able to keep her nose in her own business, you know? And obviously, she is uh, the number one Scrubby fan on the universe because for some reason, even though she hates my channel and wants it deleted, she wants post notifications on. Like, she watches every video, which is honestly hilarious to me. Like, here is this 37-year-old woman who hates my guts, wants me evicted from my house, and wants my channel deleted, but she also loves me enough to keep notifications on for me. Like, Karen, I, I know you're watching this. Big shout out to you for being the number one Scrubby fan on the planet. And uh, anyways, I made two videos about her earlier this week, and I knew she was going to be pissed because that's just the type of person she is. So obviously, after posting them, I was just waiting for the backlash to happen. And this morning, uh, July 19th, 2019, I woke up to banging on my door. And not like a calm knocking, but Karen knocking. I described it earlier, you know. It sounds a little bit like uh, meteors pounding on your door while screaming like a banshee is something about deleting your YouTube channel. Like, and that, that's just what I woke up to. So I, I hear this pounding on my door and I try to ignore it and just like go about my business because I knew it was Karen and I really didn't want to deal with Karen's crap today, you know? I wanted a nice, relaxing day, play some Fortnite with the boys, but, uh, she kept knocking for 20 minutes. I'm not even kidding. This woman has so little to do in her life that she spent 20 minutes pounding on my door and screaming, and at this point, my dogs were starting to get scared, so I was like, alright, well, uh, I guess I gotta deal with Karen because you can mess with me all you want, but if you make my dog scared, we're gonna have a problem here. So I go to the door, and I open it, and sure enough, Karen is standing there, beat red in the face, and the first words out of her mouth are, you need to open your door faster, which uh, first of all, Karen, I'm not sure if you know this, but I don't want to talk to you, you know? And second of all, I don't have to do anything, you stupid idiot. Like, I understand you're a soccer mom and you got nothing going on, so you answer the door really quickly, but maybe people just don't want to interact with you, alright? Like, I'm sorry. I don't owe you a thing. I don't have to answer my door faster just because some lazy soccer mom who wants to get me evicted from my house is really mad at me. But whatever, that's the opening note. So very clearly, Karen is in an incredible mood. Everybody can tell that, uh, she is ready to have a normal, civil conversation and we maturely discuss the YouTube videos, right? Nah, nah, nah. There wouldn't be a story time if Karen wasn't insane. So after she tells me to open my door faster I just look at her and say can I help you Karen and uh, she basically says that I need to take those videos down immediately because I'm slandering her good name in this neighborhood which two things first of all you don't have a good name in this neighborhood because nobody likes you like everyone knows you're a crazy person but Anyways, uh, I also do this thing on my channel, I don't know if you guys have noticed it, where I don't say people's real names, and there's a very specific reason for that that we're about to get into. So I look at her and say, Karen, what videos are you talking about? And she says, the videos about what I did to you, about your channel, and, and the police. Like, I get it, I might have been wrong to call the police on your house, but I do stand by what I said about you being a bad influence for children. Which, you know, way to get me to do what you want by, uh, you know, basically not backing down on anything. What a humble person, Karen. But but anyways, I just look at her and I say, Karen, I haven't posted a video about you. I don't know what you're talking about. And the look on her face is beat red. And she's like, yes, you did. Here's the two. And she pulls them up and plays them. And I'm like, yeah, I know what videos you're talking about, but... When did I say your name? When did I when did I say it was about you? And at this point, the look on her face becomes very clear, and she's realizing what I'm saying, and she's like, well, I know they're about me, and I want them deleted immediately. Well, Karen, get dabbed on. I just defaulted danced on your entire argument because, uh... 
Here's, here's the shocking truth. I never said your name. You can't prove that they're about you, unless you're admitting that you're a crazy person, in which case, you're admitting that you harassed me and tried to get me kicked out of my house and called the cops for no reason. So you know what, Karen? If you're listening to this, go ahead. Admit that they're about you. Confirm it. But that just means that you're guilty of everything, too. As of right now, I'm not gonna go to the cops. I'm not gonna do anything, because honestly, I'm fine with you making a fool of yourself. And uh, as for you, you really don't have any ground to stand on, because I'm not talking about you. Uh, the, this is a completely unrelated Karen. I know you're watching. So once Karen realizes that she really can't get my videos deleted easily because I didn't say her name or say it was about her specifically, she starts causing a scene and is basically standing in my front yard screaming. So I start laughing at this point, and uh, of course, Karen, Karen immediately does the classic, Oh, you think a woman in distress is so funny? And I'm like, no, I just think you're throwing a temper tantrum in a 20-year-old kid's front lawn because he made a YouTube video about something that might possibly, maybe, have a semblance to something you've done. So, she's standing in my front lawn, making a fool out of herself, screaming like an absolute idiot. And what I don't understand, Karen, like I, I, like I said, I know you're watching this, so I just have a question for you. Why do you do this to yourself? Like, the only way I'm gonna keep making these videos about a similar character named Karen is if you keep acting like a moron. If you just left it alone, I wouldn't have anything to make fun of. But every time you come to my house and yell at me and tell me to delete my videos or throw a temper tantrum in my front lawn, all you're giving me is more content to make fun of you for. Like, don't you understand that you should just stay away if you really hate my videos that much? Because all it's gonna do is make you look like an idiot? That, that might be giving Karen too much credit, alright? She's probably not smart enough to think it through that far ahead. So like I said, Karen is freaking out in my front lawn and I'm laughing and she's mad that I'm laughing. So the next words out of her mouth are, Well, you know we have neighbors that are lawyers, right? And uh, I don't think Karen understood what I said when I said, you can't actually sue me for anything I've done. But beyond that, what I don't even understand even more is this. Okay, Karen, let's say, let's say that you spend all your money to sue me, right? You're forgetting that you harassed me, which means I can just bring that up too. Like, it, you don't just get a get out of jail free card because I made a YouTube video that might maybe be about you. I'm not confirming it's about you, Karen. So whatever, I look at her and I'm like, all right, then uh, feel free to go get our lawyer neighbor and come back when he's here because you don't have any legal ground to stand on. So you know what, Karen, if you're gonna throw around threatening lawsuits, that's fine, I I'll be here. If you need anything, let me know. And I close my door, which obviously makes her more upset because now I'm ignoring her having her temper tantrum and just going about my day. So uh, obviously that doesn't make her too happy. So about five minutes later, I hear another knock on my door and this time it's calmer. So I answer and it's one of our neighbors who lives on our street and it is the lawyer neighbor. So I just kind of am like, hey dude, uh, and he's like, so, can I can I talk to you for a second? I say, yeah. He says, can I come in? Sure. So the lawyer guy comes in and he's like, apparently you've been harassing Karen and making YouTube videos about her. And so, I explained to him the situation because Karen basically lied to this guy and said I, like, leaked her address and told my fans to, to harass her, which is just not true. Like, if anything, I said specifically in a story the other day, I don't ever want you guys to go after anyone I ever talk about. Ever. Like, I really never want that to happen. That's not the point of these stories. So he basically asked me what's going on, so I tell him everything, I show him the videos, and he's like, well, you never said her name or that it was about this specific person. And I was like, exactly. So technically, I didn't do anything wrong, right? And he's like, well, I mean, it is America, so people can kind of sue for whatever, but I don't see much of a legal footing for her to be on. Karen actually went to a lawyer and was asking him about if she could sue me, lying about what actually happened. So at this point, I I'm pretty ticked off with Karen. So I basically ask him if I have any grounds for a restraining order or something. And he's like, well, I mean, yeah, but that would be really hard because she's your neighbor. And I was like, yeah, that's fair. She just won't leave me alone. And he's like, yeah, I know. So obviously, I'm like, this is this is weird. I don't know what's happening. So the lawyer guy leaves, and about 15 minutes later, I get another knock on my door. Keep in mind, normally I might have like two or three people knock my door a week, but at this point, I've had three people in the last four hours. So I'm not too pleased about this situation. And it's Karen, and she has this smug look on her face, and she says, well, I just contacted my lawyer, and it looks like we have plenty of grounds to sue you, so I'll see you in court. And uh, I looked at her and I said, Karen, I'm filing a restraining order on you, so you might want to be very careful about ever crossing the street again. And she's like, what are you talking about? And so I explained to her that at this point, I, I have more than enough to file for like harassment and that I can get a restraining order. And that would basically mean that she would have to stay on her side of the road. So if she ever drove down her side of the road in my car and I saw I could call the police and get her arrested. And she's like, well, that's not fair. 
And I said, you're right, but I mean, if you're going to be suing me, I don't want to ever have the danger of you coming to my house or doing anything. And at this point, she kind of picks up what I'm pointing down and is like, fine, I won't sue you, but I better not see any more videos about me on your channel. Do you understand, young man? And uh, I looked at her and said, I understand what you're saying, Karen. Have a good day. Because I did understand what she was saying. I just didn't promise that I wasn't going to make any more videos about it. So, yeah, that was uh, my morning with Karen, you know? She's sued me, or threatened to sue me, twice. I'm pretty sure she probably lied to her lawyer about what was going on, too. My lawyer friend basically told me I could hit her for harassment. Well, he's not my friend, he's my neighbor. And, uh, yeah, Karen, you are a psychopath. Please leave me alone. Like, if you leave me alone and stop bothering me, the videos are gonna stop. But every time you do something to make yourself look like a crazy person, I'm gonna make a video about it, and I'm gonna get paid to make fun of you. Like, is that really what you want? Regardless, uh, that, that's the situation at hand, guys. <laughs> I will keep you guys updated. I really didn't expect her to come at me this hard for the videos. I thought she was just gonna complain and, like, post on Facebook, but, uh... Apparently, I, I really hit a nerve. I don't know. It, it, it's all this attention she ordered. All the attention she was complaining about wanting to have, I finally gave to her. So, uh, I don't know why she's so upset. But, either way, hopefully, hopefully you guys are on my side here. Um, my, my only question is, like, what am I supposed to do here, dog? This is my neighborhood. Am I supposed to just not go outside anymore? Like, Karen is a psychopath. I'm scared. Today's notification shout-out goes to Toast in Bath. If you want the notification shout-out, all you gotta do is turn on notifications and send a screenshot to my Instagram, at Scrubby, and, uh, yeah, I shout somebody out every day. But on that note, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed. Uh, check out the merch. It's down there if you want it. If you don't want it, that's fine. We are blowing up. I've gotten, like, 100k subs in the last nine days so thank you guys all so much for that it really does mean the world i appreciate every single one of you guys but uh yeah on that note that's gonna do it for the video don't get anyone pregnant and if you do make sure they're hot i'm gonna go bug my neighbor and expect a knock on the door any minute because i just posted another video about karen <laughs> i'll see you guys later i'm out peace What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hopefully you're having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. Karen is going to break into your house and speak to your manager. Yeah, that's right. You might not have a manager at your house, but Karen will find one, I can promise you. And uh, yeah, let's get into the video. Oh, Karen, 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 Karen. I tried to warn her, guys. Last time she did anything crazy, I kind of told her that every time she does something stupid, I'm going to make a video about it and make money off of her stupid. But uh, I guess she just didn't listen because she went to a new level today something that I never saw coming All right, uh, for those of you who don't know who Karen is she's my crazy neighbor that I have a lot of beef with uh, th There's a bunch of videos on my channel about her. So if you haven't seen them I I'm sure you can go find them They're like the most popular videos on my channel But regardless me and this soccer mom have been having some beef recently because she feels like I'm a bad influence for children And uh, well while she's not wrong. She recently took it to a brand new level. All right It's beyond trying to get my channel deleted. It's beyond trying to take away my laptop. It's beyond everything she's ever done before. No, no, no. You see, uh, <laughs> yesterday, I caught Karen trying to break into my house. Well, she succeeded in breaking into my house, but, um, it, there, there's a story involved, so without further ado, let's get into it. So, I've had a friend that's been coming over lately, and, uh, his name's Grant. We've been making some YouTube videos together for, like, my third channel, you know? Uh, I haven't shouted it out or anything. If you know it, you know it. If you don't, that's fine. It's whatever. But regardless, he's been coming over every morning to to, uh, record videos and just hang out and have a good time and stuff considering you know we, we've just been trying to ball out and he's been up to date with the whole Karen fiasco and he's been parking his car in my driveway because whenever he parks it in the street Karen calls a tow truck company and then I have to go outside and try to get it towed and uh, you know that that's just the type of person Karen is she doesn't want cars in the street because she thinks it makes her look bad like I'm sorry Karen would you like my guest to park in the bushes please tell me where else my guest would, would should park Karen regardless there's no making Karen happy so uh, he's been parking in my driveway so, I guess this morning, uh, I heard my front door open and I heard somebody downstairs. So, I go downstairs and I call out Grant's name and nobody's there, you know? Like, I, I don't I don't hear him, he doesn't answer, but I know somebody came in my door and uh, was, was in my house. So, I'm like, hmm, that's weird. And my dogs were barking like crazy and they usually don't bark when Grant comes in, but I was like, wow, that, that's bizarre. But like I said, I left the front door unlocked so that way uh, my, my buddy Grant could come in. So, I go outside to check to see if his car is here, like maybe he just went to the bathroom or something. Maybe the dogs, maybe he's wearing a weird color. I don't, I don't know. Even though dogs are colorblind, I'm, I'm kind of 400 IQ for just realizing that. Burger 
regardless, I go outside to see if Grant's car is there, and sure enough, I don't see a car. So, at this point, I'm pretty sure I'm being home invaded, alright? El Chapo himself just broke out of the Supermax prison and came to my house because his daughter's a big fan of my videos or something. I don't really know. And basically, a stranger is in my house. So, I go around my house and I'm looking and I'm looking and I don't, I don't find anything, right? I'm like, huh. So, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe I'm hearing things. Maybe uh, I was playing Call of Duty and one of the bots came into my house and then got lost. I don't really know. But I go around my house and I don't see anything. So, I go back upstairs. I put my headphones on and I just keep recording uh, the, the video I was making which was yesterday's story time because I was like oh whatever no big deal uh, I, I guess I'm just hearing things so I go about my business and then I hear the door open again and this time my dog doesn't bark and I hear someone come upstairs and Grant is sitting there in an orange sweatshirt and he goes who's the lady downstairs and I'm like huh what are you talking about? And he goes, yeah, some ladies sitting downstairs. I think it looks like Karen, but I'm not quite sure. Because Grant and Karen have never had, like, face-to-face -face interactions. Because whenever Karen does anything, like call a tow truck or complain about anything about Grant being at my house, um, she doesn't do it in person. She just, like, calls and complains and then sits in her window and watches it go down. So obviously, at this point, I'm flabbergasted. This means one of two things. Either Grant and I have just discovered that there is a ghost in my house and I need to move immediately, which would make Karen happy, or... Karen has just walked into my house and that was what I heard earlier. So I go downstairs and Karen is no joke sitting on my couch with a water bottle in my hand. I guess I had missed her because she had gone to my garage. Keep in mind, I never invited her in. Meaning that Karen, this soccer mom, this entitled butthole, broke into my house. Like, I'm sorry. At what point do you get to threaten to sue someone and then walk up to their front door, check to see if it's open. If it's open, just walk in, go to the garage and grab a water bottle, and then come back in and start chilling on the couch, right? So obviously, I'm like, hello, Karen, you need to get out. Like, I, I didn't invite you here. You didn't ask to come in. And she basically looks at me and goes, we need to have another chat. And I'm like, Karen, listen. Listen, you entitled, you entitled, oh, I want to swear so bad. Susan, I'm not going to swear because I love you and I respect your platform and I refuse, refuse refuse to say naughty words because I know that's uh, that's yellow signable, but I really want to call her a mean word, a, a female dog, okay? She was sitting next to my female dog, that's what I'm going to say. But whatever, you know, Karen said that we need to talk because apparently whatever she needs to tell me is so important that she can't knock on the door, you know? Like, aha, let's just walk into a stranger's house, aha, ha. like, thanks, Karen, you're, you're an absolute unit. So obviously, I, I'm a little frustrated at this point, so I'm kind of telling Karen that she's a moron, like, I, I'm not too pleased with it, and she basically says, so I've noticed you keep posting videos about me, and I'm like, yes, Karen, and uh, this, this is definitely going to be a video, and she goes, that's fine, you can post videos about me, but you need to give me all of the money you make from each video, and I'm like, no. I'm, I'm not gonna do that and she says well I just think it's only fair that if you're going to make money off my vi off of me in my personality then I should at least be compensated for it and uh, I tr tried to politely explain to her <clears throat> Karen listen listen very closely you stupid soccer mom okay you just broke into my house I'm not giving you money to talk about how much of a moron you are. And her argument was that the door was open so it doesn't count as breaking in, which, like, might work if you're a four-year-old, you know? But when you're, uh, I don't know, 34, or I don't even know how old Karen is, 40, who cares? Who cares? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If you're over the age of seven, you should know that just walking into somebody's house, whether or not the door is unlocked, isn't okay. Like, Karen, wh where were you raised? Were you raised in Doristan, where, oh, the door's unlocked, we're totally cool it's a cultural thing because I promise you not many people are actually chill with you just breaking into their house for shits and giggles like ah, ha, ha. oh yeah me oh yeah th this old thing oh yeah sorry haha ha. just wanted to come inside and see your puppies like that's not cool I don't care but beyond that you know Karen Karen obviously wanted the cha-ching I've been making off these Karen videos and uh, I don't blame her because um they're getting a lot of views people love it because Karen's a moron so I basically politely tell her, no, I'm not going to give her any of the money for my videos. And she says, well, my husband thinks it would be fair. Like, yes, Karen, your husband, the person who has no relation to me at all. He's not my dad. He's not my uncle, not my grandpa. The only reason I know who your husband is is because he's married to your crazy, crazy self. And uh, no, yo, what, what your husband thinks is fair doesn't matter to me. I do not care what your husband has to say literally at all. You know, your husband could say I should run for president. It doesn't mean anything to me. And this obviously upsets her. And her next argument 
argument is this. <laughs> I, I don't understand Karen, who's still sitting in my living room with my water bottle, by the way. Well, my husband went to college and you didn't. So therefore, I think he has a better understanding over what's right and wrong. Cool, lady. I don't care that your husband went to college. I literally do not care. I'm not giving you the money that the videos are making. Please get out of my house. I don't know you. You don't know me like this. Get out. You broke into my house. You insane soccer mom. This is not cool. Get out. Leave. And she's arguing with me. Well, I just think it's very unfair that you won't even give it, give an inkling of thought to my proposal. No, Karen, I'm not going to give an inkling of thought to my proposal from the person who just broke into my house and took my water bottle. And that's the worst of all. She took a water bottle, guys. For just pennies a day across the nation, Karen's could use a reusable water bottle. But no, she had to break into her 20-year-old neighbor's house and just take one instead. So at this point, I I'm getting frustrated and Grant can see that. So he says, you know, you go upstairs because I probably was about to give Karen the old backhand. Uh, and, and he gets Karen out of the house. We lock the door. He comes upstairs and goes, all right. So I definitely thought you were exaggerating the Karen stories a little bit. But after seeing that... Uh, I, I, I believe you, you know, <laughs> she's, she's insane, but it doesn't end there guys. No, 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 no. Karen being crazy can't just end with her breaking into my house because that would be too calm for Karen. Five minutes later, I hear a knock on the door and I'm like, I'll be right back. So I open the door and I scream, what? Like before I even open the door. And if it's the UPS person, then I'll explain why I'm being rude. But I'm, I'm preemptively getting ready for a Karen in my face complaining about something that I have no control over or something that I don't want to do. It's just expected at this point. It's, it's normal Karen, Karen behavior. Oh, I just dropped my mouse. So I open the door and her husband is standing there and he says, Hey man, look, I know you're not going to give her the money, but can you at least do something so she feels like she has a little bit of a victory? She won't stop talking about it. She's going crazy. She's watching the videos on repeat. Please, for the love of all that is holy, please give her something so she'll calm down. And you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe if your husband would have come over like a week ago before you broke into my house or before you threatened to sue me, maybe I would have given you a $20 bill and been like, oh, that's all the ad revenue and you could have felt like you won and we could have gone our separate ways. But now at this point, I'm not going to be nice to Karen. I understand, man, that your life's got to suck because your wife is coming over and complaining about me all the time, but uh, I'm not giving your wife the dub because your wife is going to take every L in the book that I want to hand to her. And if she wants to come over and make herself a fool again tomorrow, I will once again make a video on it. Like, I I'm sorry. I've tried to be neighborly. I've tried to be nice. We're past that now. At this point, everything that happens from here on out is your wife taking an L, and I'm not going to apologize because, to be honest, I don't feel bad. And no, I'm not going to give your wife any money. So... He kind of is like, okay, okay, fair enough. You know, I don't want any problems. I'm like, dude, I get it. Your wife is insane. She just broke into my house. And he goes, what do you mean? She said that you invited her over. So I tell her husband the story of how she like just walked into my house. And I basically say, you know, I, I want to call the police. I'm not going to because I don't want your wife to go to prison. You know, very clearly there's something unhinged. But your wife can't just walk into my house, bro. Like, that's that's really not cool. You know, like, breaking into people's houses is not is not very neighborly. And he's like, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. Um, she, she's been, like, off her medication recently. I'm like, dude, I don't care if she's off her medication. Get her back on it because this is getting out of control. And the next time she does anything crazy, I'm calling the cops. And the husband's like, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Have a good day. I'm so sorry. And he's just really apologetic. Like, I feel bad for the poor guy. He obviously loves his wife. But, uh, you know, maybe if your wife's breaking into your neighbor's house, it might be time to get a new one. Just just a thought out there. I know you're watching this, Karen. <laughs> Suck it. I don't really care. Uh, you can be mad all you want. Whatever. Realistically, guys, I don't know what to do at this point. Like, I I've tried everything in the book. I've tried to be nice. I'm trying to be mean. Uh, I think I'm just gonna let her be crazy. And if she keeps being crazy, I'll keep making videos and getting more subscribers. Real simple policy. Uh, Karen, you hear that? Every time you do something dumb, I win. But on that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought, if you enjoyed, if you didn't. Those are stuff that I really, really love to hear. But uh, yeah, have an absolutely incredible day. Don't get anyone pregnant. And if you do, make sure they're hot. Today's notification shout out goes to the one, the only, the indescribable... Nico Burke. Nico Burke, thank you, my friend. If you want a notification shout out, turn on notifications, send a screenshot to me on Instagram at Scrubby, and I shout somebody out every day. And I'll see you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, Karen's husband will actually RKO your dog. Yeah, no joke. Billy Joel Olstein is her husband and he will break into your closet and steal your dog and body slam him. I've seen it happen.
Uh, on a real note though guys, hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day. My name is Scrubby and uh, today I had a little bit of a run-in with Karen's husband. You know, I used to think he was cool. I used to think he was the person grounding Karen, but today I saw a side of him that I never knew I was gonna see, okay? The side of him that made me realize, oh my god, they're a crazy married couple, alright? Not only did he deceive me with the idea that he was normal, but apparently he is in fact crazier than his wife. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. The lady that broke into my house and uh, threatened to get me arrested and evicted is somehow outshined by her husband, but trust me, by the end of the story, you guys will pick up what I'm putting down. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the video. 3, 2, 1, Arrivederci, my sexy, beautiful friends. So, uh, yeah, today I was chilling. I just got home from San Diego. I was unpacking my car, and as I'm unpacking my car and taking my luggage inside from the airport, uh, her, her husband walks up to me and he says, hey man, can we talk for a second about your YouTube channel? And I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, because every other time I've interacted with Karen's husband, he's been pretty chill. I've been like, yeah, I know my wife's a little crazy, but like, can you cut her a break? But today he just kind of looks at me and he goes, you know what you're doing is illegal, right? And I'm like, uh, wh what are you talking about, bro? And he basically tells me that he was talking to his lawyer friend and, uh, found out that it is in fact not illegal or it is, it's not legally, not legally protected if I change people's names as long as the contents of the story story are about that person, right? So he basically tells me that uh, all the stories I've been telling about his wife can actually be traced back to his wife, and he's talking to his lawyer about filing legal action to get my videos taken down. So obviously, I'm sitting here with my suitcase in my hand, and I'm like, uh, okay. Well, uh, I, I thought you were cool, dude. Like, we've never had beef, and he's like, yeah, but now you've gone too far. You've made too many videos about my wife. I can't believe you would do this. We're supposed to be neighborly. I had your back at first, but, you know, my hands are tied. It's my wife. And I'm like, dude, I get it. Your wife is insane, you know, but, um, uh, first of all, if, if this is true, like, I, I need to talk to a lawyer, all right? I'm gonna call one after this video, but, like, if it is true, somehow, that it's illegal for me to tell stories about his wife, he would also have to admit that his wife broke into my house and was, like, overall harassing me, so I don't really know how that's gonna work. But regardless, he's sitting here, and I kind of tell him, like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like, you do realize that you are actually threatening legal action against a 20-year-old because your wife is insane. He's like, my wife isn't insane. At this point, the harassment she's gone through is too much. And I'm like, dude, what harassment? None of my fans know who she is, where she lives, or anything of the sort, right? Like, Unless some of you guys, without me knowing, doxed my address, doxed the person across the street from me address, and then found out who Karen is, I don't think you're being harassed, right? And he's like, no, it's not harassment from your friends, it's harassment from you. Uh, pause, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, mister, may I speak to your manager if that is your real name. You're telling me that I have harassed your wife by making YouTube videos on her that I never sent to her or tagged her in about her breaking into my house and trying to get me evicted and calling the cops on me? That, that's me harassing your wife? Bro, I don't know how many brain cells you have. It's very clear that it's not a lot, all right? Like, you probably look at the clock and see the amount of brain cells you have working on a daily basis every five minutes, you know? It's one to 12. Maybe on a good day, it's 12, but clearly, you are super slow. Bruh, that's not harassment. If your wife doesn't like the videos I've made, how about she does this magical thing called doesn't watch them? But nah, your stupid wife is sitting there with notifications on for my channel waiting for me to talk about this stuff. And uh, obviously he doesn't like that very much. He's like, my wife is not stupid. She just wants to know what people think about her. I'm like, dog, first of all, ahem, these videos aren't about her, you know, uh, legally. <laughs> Karen is not her real name, so therefore I am fine. But also... That's so stupid. If you don't like the videos I make about you, you really have two options. Either stop being a crazy person who threatens to sue me every five minutes, or like, maybe, just maybe, maybe, don't watch them. It's not difficult, but whatever. Me and her husband are standing here arguing in my front lawn, like in my driveway while I'm holding my suitcase for probably 10 minutes, as I politely explain to him that him and his wife are both psychopaths that deserve to be in a mental hospital. When out of nowhere, like we're arguing about how insane his wife is in my YouTube videos, he goes, and not to mention, when I, when I was in your backyard this weekend, your blah 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 is enough to code for the neighborhood and I'm like hold up I was not home this weekend I was in San Diego you're telling me that you were like, hmm, he's not home. Better go into his backyard. Do you and your wife not understand what trespassing is? Are both of you this stupid? Like, honestly, how are two people who are so stupid also capable of owning a house and existing in society? You would think with the amount of brain cells that these couple is missing that, that they blatantly should forget how to breathe. But whatever. He basically admits to breaking into my backyard and looking for things to report to the neighborhood about. And I'm like, all right, dude. Well, uh, you just admitted to breaking into my backyard, you moron. And I'm recording the conversation. 
Well, I, I wasn't, but I wanted to see him freak out. And he's like, you can't record me, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dog, get off my property. So at this point, he's getting aggressive. He's like, fine. Well, I guess I'll see you in court then, since you want to be a smart guy and argue with me. You could have just avoided all of this by taking the videos down. And now you're going to see us in court. And uh, you know what, Karen, Karen's husband, since I know you guys for some reason are the biggest fans of my channel, I hope you understand that uh, you're not going to see me in court. Like, first of all, I I've made enough money off these Karen videos to get the world's best lawyer, and I will, just to embarrass you in front of the courtroom. But also, on top of that, no judge is going to, like, punish me. I don't know what you expect to happen. All right, the judge says, <clears throat> You can no longer make videos about Karen. All right, I won't talk about you anymore. Like, that, that's the worst case scenario. I still have this channel. I still make other videos. Like, you're not taking the dub. They're not taking my channel down. I promise you. I promise you that is not going to happen. And to your husband, Karen, I, I don't know what you did to this guy, okay? I don't know what you slipped in his tea or, like, put in his Dr. Pepper or whatever. But how did you get him to be on your side? Bro, like, you need to keep this man. He's so loyal that you literally broke into my house, right? And he went, nah, 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 nah. This kid's clearly in the wrong. Like, I'm a 20-year-old kid. I was in high school two years ago, and now I'm being harassed by a woman who sat behind Jesus in the third grade and her husband, who more than likely, I, I don't know, maybe, like, talked to Moses when they were parting the Red Sea. I don't really know what's going on. But apparently, they're going to hit me with a lawsuit now. And uh, I've looked up basically every law there is, and uh, there's nothing. And last time Karen threatened me with a lawsuit and I brought up the fact that she's done more illegal stuff than I have, she shut her mouth. But apparently, they're not afraid of that anymore. So, uh... Yeah, <laughs> Karen's husband is also a psychopath who wants to sue me, but it, but it doesn't end there, right? So after this conversation, I go inside, and I, I think that's going to be the end of it for the day. He goes inside, he huffs off with his little puff. He's a fat guy. I think he rolled down the driveway back over to his side of the yard. I'm not really sure what was going on. And then like 20 minutes later, there's another knock on my door. And obviously, I'm expecting it to be Karen and her husband, and I open it, and sure enough, it's her son, like th their son, right? And I feel horrible for their son. Like imagine growing up with parents so insane. This has got to be a zero out of 10 life for this kid. Could you imagine growing up with parents that want to sue everybody that talks about him? Like, that, that's got to be toxic, right? So the son's kind of talking to me, and he's apologizing for his mom. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. And then out of nowhere, Karen runs across the street and goes, I see you trying to kidnap my kid. And I'm like, what? What? Excuse me, what? You think I want your kid? Like, I can barely take care of a plant while I'm gone, all right? Like, let's be realistic here. I'm not trying to kidnap your kid. And she's like, I saw you. You were talking to my kid. I can't believe you would try to kidnap my kid. I'm calling the police. And I'm like, um... Oh, I was not trying to kidnap your kid. And even her kid's like, Mom, he wasn't trying to kidnap me. And she's like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Kids are so easy to manipulate. You're manipulating my child. You're trying to kidnap him. And at this point, I'm like, dog, was this a setup? Did they really send this kid over to try to apologize to me just so they could accuse me of kidnapping him? Whatever. So at this point, I look at Karen and I'm like, all right, you guys call the cops. Try, try to get me for kidnapping. Whatever. Just to let you know, my doorbell has a camera in it, and it filmed the entire interaction. I also have security cameras, so chances are, you don't got anything. By the way, I ended up getting the security cameras because Karen was, you know, breaking into my house and being a weirdo, so I wanted proof that she did it next time. So whatever. She's like, well, I guess we'll let the cops decide. So she calls the cops, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, oh my god, like, this, this is ridiculous. The cops come knock on the door. I show them the footage. The kid very clearly walks up to my house. The entire conversation is recorded. They're like, okay, very obviously, you didn't try to kidnap the kid. Shockingly, I don't have a white van with free candy painted on the side of it in my driveway. I I'm obviously not a kidnapper. I don't even know what I would want to do with a middle school kid. Like, oh, bro, want to play some Fortnite? I don't, I don't know what you was trying to pin on me. So the cops are like, all right, well, you know, this is like the third time we've been called here. Obviously, there's a problem. And so I break down everything that's happened. I break down the lawsuit threats. I break down everything. And the cops are like, wow, you really have a neighbor from hell. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Karen and her husband are wackadoodles, and I need to get out of here. And the cops basically tell Karen to knock it off because this is ridiculous. I very obviously didn't try to kidnap the kids. This is a serious call, whatever. And, and then obviously her and her husband are saying that I'm a, I'm a terrible neighbor. And the cops are like, it's not illegal to be a bad neighbor. First of all, the, the kid didn't do anything. You guys are very obviously like trying to fight him. Second of all, it's not illegal to be a bad neighbor, which thank you, officer, even if I was a bad neighbor. Let's say I was throwing parties every night, just going out of my way to throw trash on their lawn. None of that is illegal. Like, sure, it's not nice to be a bad neighbor, but you can't sue me and try to get me arrested for being a bad neighbor. Whatever. So a after all this goes down, I come inside and uh, I immediately look at Grant because he was over during the whole ordeal. And I'm like, dude, I, I, I need to make a video about this because honestly, this keeps getting ridiculous. So uh, Karen and her husband, I know you're watching this. 
the longer you keep this up, the longer I'm going to keep making videos about it. Like, I, I explain this every time, but let me say it very, very slowly. The more you guys do dumb stuff, the more views I'm going to get. I'm not trying to kidnap your kid. You can sue me all you want. I, I promise you, I've made more money this month off your idiot wife than you guys have, and, and I can pay for a better lawyer than you. Like, that that's, that's a promise. I can promise you that. So please, please sue me, because throughout the course of the lawsuit, I will get more videos about your wife than you ever will anything out of me. I like, I, I, I promise you, please stop for the love of God. Also, please stop using your kid as bait, okay? Like, let, let the poor kid live, all right? He's already gonna get enough flack at school when his parents and everyone else realizes that uh, she's the Karen I've been talking about because the kids in the neighborhood pretty much know it's your, your son's parents. Like, it's you guys. So way to go, 10 out of 10 parenting, you're, you're gonna get your kid, like, messed with in middle school, and that's not cool. But on that note, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. I, I know that, uh, this has been quite the saga, okay? I, I know it's getting out of control, and I'm gonna try my best to make sure nothing happens again. I got security cameras, the cops told them to mess up. If, if they keep doing this, I really don't know what else I can do to make them back off. So, uh, yeah. Today's notification shout-out goes to Sawyer Kunkel. Big shout-out to you, dog. Thank you for having notifications on. If you want it, all you gotta do is turn on notifications and send me a screenshot on my Instagram, at Scrubby, and uh, I shout somebody out every day. Other than that, I might release some Karen merch with just uh, let me talk to your manager. If you guys are interested in that, let me know. And on that note, don't anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. I'll talk to you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's the indestructible scrub here back again with another video Hope you guys are having an absolutely incredible day I know I am if you are be sure to press the like button otherwise no joke no scam Johnny Depp will break into your house posing as the legendary pirate Jack Sparrow and steal everything in your kitchen Especially your forks. He has a weird fetish for forks. I don't really know so I uh, defend your forks guys I'm sorry. I don't make the rules I just follow them as you guys can tell today I have another video about angry dads I don't know what it is about my life that just gets so many angry dads coming after me all the time, but you know, it's the life I've chosen to live, okay? Did, did the astronauts question why they were sent to the moon? Did Vladimir Putin question why he was in charge of Russia? No, because it was what their destiny was, and my destiny is to get yelled at by angry dads and then tell the stories on YouTube to entertain the masses, okay? Realistically, I don't really know why dads have beef with me, but uh, it happens pretty often, and this story is honestly one of the funniest ones, because this kid's dad actually tried to fight me, like, hit me with the, you trying to take it outside motion, and, um, yeah, was actually gonna square up with a 16-year-old when he was, like, 47. So, uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy, and let's get into the video. So I feel like everybody's had a friend that's like sort of your friend and sort of in the friend group But sort of not you know like you'll see him maybe one out of ten times you hang out And we had this one guy in our little friend group and his name well, I'm gonna make it up His name was Chris, okay, like that's what I'm gonna call him for the story and Chris and I we didn't not get along We didn't really get along either. We were just kind of mutually boys like we we were friends with the same people So we never hung out one-on-one, -on -one, you know, but like we knew who we were and uh, we didn't have any beef with each other So anyways, I had a class with Chris and we ended up getting put together in a group project which was pretty dope you know like I said I didn't have to be with him I thought he was a cool dude I've hung out with him a few times so uh, when you get put in a group project with somebody that you can kind of be friends with it's that hype moment you know because usually you're stuck with like Deborah who does all the work and then complains about nobody else doing all the work a kid who doesn't even show up until the last five minutes of the group project and then you're just kind of sitting there in the middle like bro I don't, I don't even know what's going on like that's usually a group project so when you get somebody that you're kind of friends with you know that's important so we decide that we're gonna do the group project at his house and Chris comes to me and he's like, yo, uh, if you want, you can just ride with me to my house. I'll bring you back to the school afterwards and drop you back off at your car. And I'm like, oh, that's a little bit weird, but uh, sure, you know, like, why not? I'll ride with this guy to his house. I don't know where his house is anyways. It's probably easier to just ride with him than getting directions. That's just way simpler than uh, trying to figure this out. I also really don't like driving, all right? I don't know what it is about driving, okay? But being in control of a car that weighs two tons, moving 60 miles an hour, and at any moment, anyone can hit you and you'll die, like, that's not really dope for me, you know? That doesn't make me happy. No, don't get me wrong. I, I like driving alone. Like, if there's no one on the road, it's sick. But when there's other people on the road, it's just not my favorite thing to do. So I get to I get out of driving, and I don't have to learn directions. I don't have to look at Google Maps. Heck yeah, this is a dub for all parties. So I tell Chris, yeah, sure. Uh, after school, we'll just pull up to your car, and we'll fly out to your house. You know, we'll be gangsters out there. So the day comes and we hop in Chris's car and he immediately pulls out cigarettes. And like, I don't, I don't smoke cigarettes, alright? I don't like nicotine. I know all you kids out there are jewel addicts.
addicts who secretly love the fact that you have a nicotine addiction. I don't get it, all right? I've been told to stay away from cigarettes. As Dare taught me, say no to everything fun. And, uh, you know, I just don't smoke. If you do, like, I guess, you know, good for you to have a nicotine addiction, I guess. But it's just not for me. I don't smoke or anything. So he whips out a cigarette and starts smoking. And, uh, you know, obviously that's a little bit uncomfortable, okay? Like, I'm sitting in the car feeling like Anne Frank because he's smoking a cigarette and I can't even breathe without sniffing in all this nicotine and, like, noxious fumes, which was just really not dope, you know? Like, it was, I, was, I was not feeling breathing in all this smoke. So I rolled out my window a little bit and he's like, oh, do you not smoke? And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, my parents don't know that I smoke, so I just smoke in my car so that way they don't ever find out about it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Like I said, I don't smoke, but... I don't really got beef with you if you do. I mean, it's kind of silly, but it's also just rude to smoke with somebody else in the car, all right? Like, let's be realistic here. Uh, you invited me to be in your car, and then you got in and went, nah, 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 better uh, make him breathe in nothing but secondhand smoke for the next 20 minutes. I'm not down with that. So, obviously, I'm a little annoyed, but, like, I'm, I'm acting chill because I ain't got no beef. So we go. I meet his parents. They're pretty chill, uh, and, and they're, like, really, really, really strict, though. You can tell as soon as we walked in, the mom's like, take your shoes off at the front door doing 20 push-ups like she was basically a drill sergeant all right so i'm trying to blend in i'm like all right, all right i can deal with strict parents no big deal so we do our little bit of the group project the entire group goes home he takes me back to the car but we didn't get it all done so the next day we had to go back to chris's house and just finish the group project you know like that that was really all that we needed to do we had one more day left we didn't have much left and he's like yo you want to do the same thing tomorrow i'll drive you and i was like yeah sure that's fine no big deal, Chris. We'll bool out. Your parents might be a little strict. Please don't smoke in the car with me again, okay? I couldn't breathe. That wasn't the dopest. But uh, no, no sweat, dog. The next day, same thing happens. We get in his car. He starts smoking a cigarette. We get to his house, and uh, we're doing the group project for probably about two hours, maybe. And then his dad comes home from work and walks in, and from the front door is already just screaming. Like, you know when parents are just yelling, and they don't even know their kid's name? They start calling you the dog's name because they're getting confused. They're like, Ryan, Roscoe, uh, Ned, uh, get down here immediately. So the entire group and him kind of go downstairs because uh, when someone's yelling, you kind of want to see what's going on, you know? Like, I don't hear a man screaming like a banshee and go, nah, 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 I'm not curious. I'm going to stay here and do a science project, all right? Like, uh, no, no, I'm sending it. I'm going to go see what's going on. So we get down there, and his dad is looking real mad, and he says, so I just got in your car to go get your oil changed, and it smells like cigarette smoke. Like, what, are you smoking in your car? Are you smoking, young man? You know that's unacceptable in this house. That is drastically, not, like, you can't do that. You can't smoke. And, uh, you yeah, know what? this kid does you know what Chris does ladies and gentlemen instead of being like oh my gosh dad I don't know why it smells like smoke or yes I own my actions I knew I shouldn't have been smoking in the car and I should have just been a good boy and smoked in the backyard like a normal person but now I'm in my car smell like cigarette smoke you know what Chris does no none of that he's not responsible he doesn't do the right thing he doesn't do anything you know what he does he looks at his dad and he says oh yeah that was Ryan Ryan smoked in the car and I'm like bruh Bruh, like, I'm not even ready to defend myself, okay? So the dad instantly turns to me, he's like, Who do you think you are smoking in my son's car? My son's car's not an ashtray, and I'm like, Bruh, I, 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 I'm flustered, I'm doing that, like, I don't know what to say, because I wasn't expecting to get blamed, okay? Like, you don't go to a murder trial to sit in the audience and then expect them to be like, You were the murderer! Like, you're like, what? What, what, do you, what do you mean? I was not ready to defend myself at all. Which, I guess his dad takes as, like, a sign of guilt, you know? He's like, oh, you know how it is. You, you're staying silent because you, you know... No, you're guilty. I can't believe you would absolutely do the worst thing ever. Do you know how disrespectful it is to smoke in my son's car? I can't believe you. And so finally, after like a minute, I muster up the courage to be like, no, 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 it wasn't me. It was your son. Like after a little bit of flustering back and forth, my words and not really knowing what's going on, I finally get out the words. It was your son. But at this point, I've already stumbled my words enough where he doesn't believe a word coming out of my mouth. And he's like, oh, yeah, it was my son. Wow. Now you're lying to my face in my own household. I can't believe you kids are so disrespectful. I want you out of my house this instant and I'm like all right well your son drove me here when he smoked in the car he's like stop accusing my son of smoking in the car my son would do no such thing you're such a white trash person to do that which is a real bruh moment because uh, I didn't smoke in your son's car bro like I just don't smoke and second of all Chris how are you gonna do me like that like you could have come up with any other excuse other than just blaming me you could have done literally anything other than just being like yeah it was Ryan you could have said any other excuse at all you know we drove through a skunk we 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 fought Betty White and she had cigarettes I don't 
don't know. Literally anything else other than just pinning it on me. So at this point, I'm like, no, your son did it. And his son, Chris, is doubling down. He's like, wow, don't accuse me of what I didn't do. You know you spoke to my car. I told you not to. And you said you didn't care. And my parents weren't going to find out. And now I'm in trouble. Like, this dude was really doubling down on his story, all right? He wasn't quietly, meekly sitting in the corner. He's getting involved in arguing with me, too, and being like, I did no such thing. So the dad is getting increasingly furious. And he's like, you have 10 seconds to get out of my house. And I was like, all right, have fun with your liar of a son. And, and you know, maybe, maybe next time, instead of just insulting somebody, you should listen to their side of the story first, which I guess infuriated him to no end. He's like, are you calling me a liar? And uh, me being me and being accused of something I didn't do, I said, yes, you're a liar. You are lying through your teeth, bro. I'm sorry. Your son is a liar. I didn't smoke in his car. And the dad at this point looks at me and he says, we're going outside. I'm like, for what? What are we going to do outside? He's like, I need to fight you. Clearly, no one's ever kicked your butt and taught you manners, so I need to do it. I'm like, really? Really, dude? We're going to fight? And he's like, yeah, unless you're too pansy. Are you too pansy to fight me? And, uh, you know, here's the problem with calling me a pansy. I am a 16-year-old kid in your living room being accused of something I didn't do. And you are a 47-year-old man who's going to beat up a 16-year-old. I'm not the pansy here, bro. So I'm kind of saying this to him. I'm like, you're really going to fight a child because your son lied. Like, do you not understand how stupid that is? And he's like, no, let's go outside unless you're too wimp. Are you too chicken? Are you too chicken? And then Chris is like, yeah, he's probably too chicken to fight you. So I look at Chris and I'm like, dog, do you want to take it outside? Like, I'll fight you. I won't fight your dad. And his dad's like, nah, it's not between you and my son. It's between me and you. So, uh, I, I kind of start talking smack a little bit. I'm like, I'm going to smack both your white trash butts outside. Like, let's go. Let's take it. Come on. So we go outside and we're like pressing each other and I'm up on the, up in their face. And then, um, you know, we're, we're like about to fight and Chris comes at me and I punch Chris once. Cause I'm like, dog, like I'm mad at you. And, uh, I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And the dad is like, now he's trying to back down. Like, all right, no, no, no I don't want to fight. You're not worth my time. You're not worth it. You're not worth it. I'm like, dog, you literally just said you were going to beat up a 16 year old. I hit your son once and now you're going to leave. Like, are you really afraid of me? Cause I punched your son. Let's go, bro. If you didn't want to fight, you don't drag a 16 year old into your front lawn and be like, all right, we're fighting. Cause you disrespected my honor. Nah, dog. It's too late for that. There, there is, there is no more going back. You started this. Now you got to deal with the consequences, bro. Like, sorry, not my fault. But his dad's like, no, no, no. You're not worth my time. You're not worth my energy. You'll probably sue me because you're so money hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not fighting you. And I was like, all right, we don't have to fight then. And, uh, you know, I, I called my friend. He picked me up and I went home and uh, we got an A on our group project. And I never talked to Chris again. And Chris, if you and your dad are watching this, you're still wimps, dog. You tried to start a fight, and then when I was like, all right, let's throw down. You guys chickened out. That is zero cool, dude. Not to mention, your dad was a grown man trying to fight a child and then got scared. Like, how are you going to threaten a kid and then get scared of a kid five minutes later? I don't know. That's that's really on you. But on that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. If you enjoyed, if you didn't enjoy, that, uh, that that's that's what's really important, you know? Today's notification shout-out goes to Thomas Norling. Shout-out to you for having notifications on, bro. If you want a notification shout out, send me a screenshot of your notifications on at Scrubby on Instagram and I shout somebody out every day. But yeah, on that note, guys, get the merch. There's going to be new merch coming soon and I'm going to take down the stuff that's down there. So that stuff's on a limited time. And uh, yeah, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. Uh, if you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. The space-time continuum will rip open and you will be sent back to a time around 3000 BC where you will instantly die of whatever disease was there at the time that has long since been dormant. Yeah, that's right. There were no vaccines back then, so I would press the like button and be careful. Uh, Karen, 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 guys. Alright, I, I thought it was settled. Okay, you see, after the last story, I'd told Karen and her husband came over and kind of said like hey you know we've overreacted a little bit we're gonna chill out and I didn't make a video about it because I was like all right they're gonna chill out my life's gonna be fine and uh I'm not gonna have to sweat or stress about my insane neighbor coming over and trying to ruin my life you know or at least that's what I thought I thought when they were like hey we'll chillax that they were actually gonna chillax but uh, apparently that wasn't the case which is why I'm sitting here telling you guys this story right now I I'm really not quite sure the exact situation of what go went on because uh, I actually wasn't involved this time I just got blamed for it but essentially this morning uh, I, I usually wake up around 10 and about 7 a.m. I hear the knocking on my door and uh, it, Karen has a very specific knock because it sounds like a beaver frantically trying to chew her way through a dam in a river except on my door so I instantly knew that it was Karen kind of coming back to uh, try her best to get mad at me for some stupid reason because that's basically all she ever does and it being super in the morning I just took my sweet time going downstairs I took my sweet time getting out of bed 
bad. I wasn't exactly in a rush to go get yelled at by a soccer mom standing on my front porch for something uh, that, that usually is pretty stupid. So it takes me about 10 minutes to finally get up and go check the door, at which point she has continued knocking on the door the entire time, all right? I don't know how her knuckles haven't imploded into her hand like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle punching a garbage disposal, but like, she was knocking for the entire 10 minutes. So finally, I answer the door and I kind of am like, yes, Karen, like, what, what would you like? What can I do for you? Please enlighten me on what I've possibly done now. And she goes, you know what? I, I thought we, we solved this with the apology. I cannot believe you would be so disrespectful to me and my husband and our household. How dare you? And like, listen, guys, if I had done something, trust me, I wouldn't have been able to not laugh. And I also would have told you about it, okay? I am 50 shades of confused right now. I am sitting here slack-jawed, flabbergasted, wondering what she's talking about. I don't know what I did to be disrespectful. I haven't talked about them on YouTube. I, I hadn't gone to their house. I hadn't done anything. So I'm kind of like... Karen, what are you talking about? Like, what what in the world are you talking about? And she starts giving me a rant about how she could technically press charges for me on this, and they have cameras that caught everything. Like, her security cameras caught literally everything, and I'm I'm so lucky that she hasn't called the police already, and that she just wants to solve it the, the old-fashioned way, and I'm like, Karen, what are you talking about? Like, I get it, you know, I'm, oh, I'm going to jail, you could sue me, ah, uh, ruin my life, ah, whatever. Like, I get it, you're, you're a very angry soccer mom, you're screaming a lot right now. You still haven't told me what I've done. Like, can you please at least tell me what I'm being yelled for about, all right? Like, that, that, that's part, that's part of the legal system. You have to tell people the crime they're being charged for. And she looks at me, and with the sassiest, may I speak to your manager, my Starbucks order was wrong, sass goes, oh, so you didn't egg my house last night? And, and like I said, guys, if I ate her house, I would own it. I have no problem admitting if I've done something stupid or done something to piss people off. I didn't egg Karen's house. Like, I had nothing to do with it. I, I was I was in my house all last night. Like, I have no idea what she's talking about. And I look at her, I'm like, I didn't egg your house. And she's like, likely story, likely story. Except this time around, you can't lie your way out of it. Because we have security cameras. And I'm like, bruh, unless, unless I have an evil twin out there who purposely is going to piss off Karen, like... I really didn't do it. I have no idea what she's talking about. Also, you know, maybe I sleepwalked. Like, maybe I sleep-egged her house, okay? Like, my subconscious was like, LOL, go throw a produce or whatever eggs are at Karen's house just to piss her off. I don't really know. All I know is I was not conscious of me attacking Karen's house with eggs at any point in the last night, all right? So I'm kind of like, okay, well, can I see the security footage? And she's like, no. I'm like, uh, well, how are you gonna say that you have footage of me and then not show me the footage? Like, I'm telling you, I didn't egg your house, right? And she's like, well, who else could it have been then? We don't have problems with anyone else in this neighborhood. And I'm like, uh, Karen, lit literally everybody hates you. There is not a single person in this neighborhood who you haven't yelled at for something stupid. It could have been anyone. It could have been an adult. It could have been a kid. Literally everyone in this neighborhood thinks that you're a shrill old witch who probably keeps kids in her closet so she can cook them in the oven. Like, let's be realistic here, Karen. You're a psychopath, and that, that's, that's, that's the case. No one likes you. So, it could have been a lot of people. I didn't say that exactly like that, but I basically said, you know, I've heard people have an issue with you. It definitely could have been more than just one person. Like, maybe, maybe you just gotta show me the footage. She's like, fine. Well, I guess since you wanna lie and make yourself look like a fool, we can go check the security footage, since that's really what you want. All right. Okay, let's go. So we walk across the street and we go into Karen's house. I've never been inside Karen's house before, guys. And I could only describe it as having the personality and feeling of a Kleenex napkin, okay? Like, I didn't understand how basic a human being could be until I went into Karen's house. Because trust me when I say this, it was the most basic household I have ever seen in my entire life. But that's besides the point. If your household wants to be basic, that's fine. So she takes me to this little room where there's a bunch of cameras set up. And uh, she's kind of like, look, last night at 3.30 a.m. And she like is scrolling back and uh, sure enough somebody did egg her I'm not gonna lie her her house was egged I will give her that fantastic good for you Karen now you have yoki walls but I don't know if their security cameras were installed in 1974 or what but this camera footage was absolute crap like this camera footage was the same camera footage you'd see on the history channel show about finding Bigfoot when they're like look we have security camera footage of Bigfoot and you see like four pixels moving and they're like yep it's 100% him like there, there is no way that you can tell that this little shade of, of black on the screen throwing this, throwing these eggs is me. Because keep in mind, it's at night. They didn't really have very good uh, night vision cameras. So it's literally like a shadow throwing things at the house. And I'm like, Karen, come on. Like, come on. You're smart enough to know that you cannot, uh, you cannot prove that's me. Like, you cannot prove that's me. And she's like, oh, so you are guilty. You're saying that we don't have proof. So now you're just taunting me. And I'm like, no, Karen, I'm just saying... 
that's like two and a half pixels, okay? I don't know how you can tell that's me from two pixels, but it's not me. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, I would own it. I didn't egg your house. And she's like, well... Well, I guess I guess my husband's gonna have something to say about it, won't he? And I'm like, I probably. I'm sure he has words in his mouth. Doesn't mean I'm gonna respect what he's saying because I didn't egg your house. I had nothing to do with it. So at that point, she starts just ranting about how we we could solve this all. We don't have to go to the police. We don't have to get the lawyers involved. I just need to give them the money for the repairs. And uh, excuse me, last time I checked, I don't think eggs breaking on the outside of your house is causing extensive damages. Okay, last time I heard, Hurricane Katrina didn't have a section where it was like if eggs were thrown from the grocery store onto your house and you need to repair the damage is done by the eggs let me know so i'm like okay well how much damage do you think the eggs did and this girl this this woman this grown woman has the nerve to say well we think it's going to be about seven grand to fix the damage from the eggs Excuse me? What? Were these eggs made out of concrete? Did these eggs have black holes in them? Did these eggs actually have the power of Naruto to smash through the wall, break your television, and then destroy your water heater? What could eggs have possibly done $7,000 in damages to? So, I'm, like, at this point, I'm like, yeah, you're calling the cops, because I'm not giving you seven grand, okay? Like, first of all, I wasn't going to give you a dime because I didn't do it. Second of all, now you're like, I'll have to get the cops involved unless the, the repairs are paid for. All right, call the cops. Let them investigate your two pixel grainy security camera footage that doesn't literally prove anything fine call them waste their time so obviously karen is kind of like mm -hmm. well you could just pay us and get this all over with and da -da 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 -da. and i'm like karen i'm not gonna give you the money like I, I don't know who you think you are i promise you i have zero intentions to pay you because that is ridiculous like I'm not going to give you $7,000 because your house got egged by someone that wasn't me. And she's like, well, then I guess we'll just launch an investigation. And I'm like, all right, launch an investigation. And I'm thinking at this point, she's going to call the cops, right? Like, oh, you're launching an investigation. You're going to call the police, right? That That's what makes sense in my head. You call the police to launch a criminal investigation, especially if $7,000 in damage has been done to your house. But no, no, no. I look outside my window about an hour later, and Karen is legitimately in my front yard with a magnifying glass. Like, what? Are you going to find microscopic eggshells in my front lawn to be like, haha, you have egged me all along. Karen, I know you watch these videos. I didn't egg your house. Let it go. So I guess when she said launch an investigation, it meant she was going to take a magnifying glass and sleuth around the neighborhood and try to figure everything out. She's knocking on everybody's doors. She was asking a couple people down the street if she could come inside and see what type of eggs they have to see if it matched up with the eggs that were thrown at her house. Like this lady is actually mentally unhinged. I don't know how bored you have to be all day to think that you are an FBI crime unit capable of, like, getting a search warrant and looking through people's houses, but she was also knocking on people's doors and demanding to search their fridge, like, demanding, like, well, I, I'm launching an investigation. Karen, your investigation doesn't have any, like, what? You're not, you're not the police. You can't just barge into people's houses and be like, I need to check what eggs you have now. Like, I, you, you are mentally unhinged. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the update on Karen. Someone ate her house. It wasn't me. She blamed me, wanted $7,000 for eggs damages, and now is currently parading around the neighborhood pretending that she has a search warrant and needs to look in people's fridges. So I will keep you updated on this as, as much as I can. You know, every time I get enough for a video, I'll, I'll make one on it because something tells me that this one is not going away for a while. She is mentally unhinged, screaming at everybody how uh, there was a hate crime in the neighborhood over these eggs. So... Yeah, Karen, you're you're a psychopath. Thank you for giving me enough material for another story, though. I was starting to think you were going to be normal after you apologized, but uh, big ups to you for becoming mentally unhinged and launching an FBI investigation in the neighborhood. I, I appreciate you. On that note, guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. And as always, turn on notifications. Today's notification shout-out goes out to Dylan. Great guy, great friend. Hope you have a great day, bro. And uh, yeah, on that note, don't get anyone pregnant. And if you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see See you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. If you are, press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. A team of flying monkeys will come to your location, put you inside of a tornado, and you will wake up in a strange land with nothing but little people around you singing songs about lollipops. You don't want to go there, trust me. Hey, guys, what's up? As you guys can tell from the title, the thumbnail, and uh, my excitement currently, I've got a little update on Karen. The last time I told you guys, was that she uh, was launching an investigation around my neighborhood to try to find out who egged her house by like knocking on people's doors and uh, 
uh, you know, um, looking in their fridge because magically she was gonna figure out that these eggs were the same eggs. Like, I don't even know how that works, okay? Mm -mm. Yes, judging by the eggshells that are in your refrigerator, I can justify that you actually hurled eggs at my house in two in the morning. But hey, that's just how Karen's brain works, all right? I, I, I'm not really too uh, sure what she thinks is gonna go on, but that's just Karen for you. And uh, I've been paying close attention to the situation, just kind of doing my best to uh, listen to what's going on in the neighborhood. I've kept my eyes on the Facebook page for the neighborhood, and I can tell you now with confidence, lady and gentlemen, that not only has Karen pissed me off, she has now pissed off basically every single person in the neighborhood. And uh, I'm going to warn you, this, this is going to be a doozy, guys. You guys are going to get a giggle out of it. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about my batshit crazy neighbor. So uh, after I realized that Karen was going door to door and asking to look in fridges, I was expecting her to come knock on my door and ask to look in mine and she just never did like I don't know if she realized that it just wasn't worth barking up the wrong tree or what but uh you know she never came to me and was like Ryan I need the truth can I look in your fridge like she, ne she never really came and bugged me about it outside of that one time right after we talked which was pretty annoying but like hey what can you do about it but apparently she literally hit every neighborhood in the house or every house in the neighborhood not every neighborhood in the house you know that that's a little backwards and the only reason I know this is the entire Facebook page was alight with is it legal for her to come ask me to look through my my fridge like do I have the ability to say no I know it's the nice thing to do to say yes to let her look through my fridge for my eggs but this is just weird and uh yeah I don't blame you a grown woman knocking on your door like hey excuse me um someone threw eggs at my house and now I would really love to look in a 57 year old man's fridge just to make sure it wasn't you is like a really weird thing to ask but that's just Karen and uh I, I guess people were annoyed with that but like oh well you know the lady's just trying to figure out if anything happened to her house we'd all do the same who cares that's that's what most people were kind of saying is yeah it's crazy oh well but but hey, she's not hurting anybody. And that was until uh, yesterday on the Facebook wall, all right? So uh, the kids in my neighborhood went back to school on Monday, all right? And uh, RIP in the chat, guys, if you're going back to school, I deeply apologize. I know your pain, and I want you to know that you will get through this trying hard time in your life. And, uh, you know, so people were kind of on the Facebook page kind of being like, oh, kids go back to school, haha, -ha, so glad that they're gone. And, you know, I, I just kind of lurked the Facebook page, all right? It's a bunch of adults talking about adult stuff. But then after school, posts start coming in saying, hey, what? can we do about this and pictures and videos start popping up of Karen standing at the kids bus stop with a sign saying if you know anything about the eggs let me know and parents talking about how she was walking up to each individual kid and like trying to interrogate them on if they knew anything about who egged her house this is like what I, I don't know a, uh, a, a an old woman sitting at a bus stop with a sign being like do you know anything about the Angskins? Like, as far as looking like an absolute creeper goes, that's pretty high up there. And obviously the parents were upset, because uh, when your kid's just trying to go to school and, I don't know, not get accused of egging somebody's house by a strange old woman who yells at people, th that, that probably is pretty frustrating to have to deal with. And yeah, it is pretty creepy that Karen was on the bus stop creeping on the little kids to try to get some intel on her criminal case, alright? But Karen is a verified FBI agent with the ability to do the most elaborate crime schemes to ever exist, okay? Okay, well, let's all be honest here. Karen is absolutely god-tier detective. That's why she hasn't been able to figure out who threw freaking eggs at her house. Like, I'm sorry, Karen takes herself super seriously and acts like she's this metal detective with, with, with the ability to sleuth anything out. But uh, if you're so desperate to solve your crime that you are sitting at a child's bus stop with a sign saying, please tell me what you know, you're not a very good detective, all right? Like, I, I don't think the police have ever been like, you know what, we got no leads. You know what we need to do, Jonathan? Pick up your keys. We're going to the bus stop, kids. Let's go. Let's go yell at some middle schoolers to try to figure out what's going on. Like that's just not what happens. And uh, obviously, parents were a little bit annoyed because they felt like their kids should have just been able to go to school like kids do. You know, they shouldn't have had to worry about some strange old lady with some weird vendetta for her teenage neighbors. But instead of taking the slight criticism on the chin, Karen decides that this is valid proof that, and I'm not even kidding here, the entire neighborhood is in a conspiracy theory to egg her house and make her look like a crazy person. So like on this post obviously Karen's in the group because she lives in the neighborhood and um, you know people kind of knew it was Karen But it's one of those things where if you do something wrong They call you out in the group like they don't call you out publicly But they're kind of like hey, this is wrong and you're supposed to just be like oh, that's me. They're talking about me I shouldn't do this so uh, obviously Karen sees the parents kind of being like wow It's really creepy that you showed up to a bus stop to yell at our kids when they're just trying to go to school for the day Like you're not a super detective. It's okay that your house got hit with a bunch of eggs. Can you? leave my child alone which you know 
hey, leave your kids alone, dog. Like, kids are off limits. That's just kind of the rules. So, uh, instead of understanding that parents are just a little bit upset that Karen is creeping on the bus stop, she writes an absolute book in the comments. And when I mean a book, I'm telling you, this entire post was probably... Five, six paragraphs in response, basically saying uh, the following. I, I wrote down the highlights so I could read them to you guys. I think it's time I call this what it really is. I know all of you are conspiring to destroy my property and make me look insane. I can't believe the neighbors I once trusted was stooped so low as to form an actual conspiracy to try to take down my credibility in the neighborhood. I'm disgusted. Now at this point, I'm laughing hysterically. Like, does she honestly believe everyone in the neighborhood organized an event? We made a secret group chat with every everyone's phone number in it and say, Ayo, you guys ready to meet by the fountain at 1 p.m. with our hoods on? And then went over there and said, how funny would it be if we egged Karen's house and then didn't tell her that anybody did it so that way she would look like an idiot and lose her credibility? Which, Karen, let me get this straight. You feel like we're trying to destroy your credibility in the neighborhood by all being conspired against you. But if everyone in the neighborhood is against you, who are you losing your credibility with? Like, I, I don't understand. So at this point, Karen actually thinks she is in the middle of a JFK-level conspiracy, all right? Like, who shot JFK and who aged Karen's house? These are the mysteries of the century. Let's be honest here, guys. A lot of people have asked if we actually landed on the moon. A lot of people are asking what actually happened during Michael Jordan's break in baseball. Was he banned for gambling? I don't know. But the world's greatest conspiracy is, is Karen's neighbors actually trying to ruin her credibility? I don't I really understand what's going on here. All I know is that that sounds absolutely small brain stupid, right? So other people in the comments start arguing with her, and I, I can't put screenshots of those up because they said a lot of names of people in the neighborhood, and like, I don't want to leak any names, okay? Uh, because, I don't know, I just don't feel like that's the right thing to do. But basically, she starts arguing with them and somebody points out how ridiculous it would be for the entire neighborhood to meet together and conspire to take her down, right? And that's when Karen drops a real doozy. She starts talking about how we've always been obsessed with her and how everyone in this neighborhood needs to just stop having a crush on her. Karen, listen, listen, you know, me and you, we've had our beef. We've had our beef. We have, we have, we really have. And you know what? I don't hate you. I don't. You've you've made my channel blow up. Big shout out to you. Big ups. Like, you know, you've made me real bank. Like, shout out, shout out Karen videos. You know what I mean? But uh, you're not pretty, okay? No one's obsessed with you. Nobody has a crush on you. I promise. Like, that, that's not an insult. It's okay. It's okay. It's just what you lack in physical appearance, you double down on being an ugly person. So, I don't know what you want to do with that information. I don't know if you want to take it to the bank and uh, put it in or whatever, but yeah, that, that's that's the truth. Nobody has a crush on you, and nobody conspired against you. You make yourself look like a crazy person and then wonder why people don't want to be associated with you. Like, you really went and thought, hmm, I should go to a bus stop and harass children on their way to school, and that will make me look normal. And then when people said, stop harassing children, your first thought was, huh, Better say that they're all obsessed and in love with me and conspired against me because the only reasonable inf explanation for why someone would be upset with me stalking their children is if they conspired against me like the FBI conspiring to take down, um, I don't know, Fidel Castro, okay? Like, you're absolutely insane. So, uh, yeah, Karen's little feud with me that apparently was super personal and that she would never beef with anybody else in the neighborhood has now escalated and the entire neighborhood is slowly starting to realize even more how much of a psycho she is. And everybody already knew she was kind of crazy because, uh, people were already like, I'm so sorry you have to deal with her as your neighbor. And, uh, you know, she keeps digging the hole in deeper. Even up till now, she keeps posting stuff on Facebook about how everyone in this neighborhood is a terrible person and how she wishes she could move. And, like, you know what, Karen? I, I wish you could move move to. R regardless, guys, uh, Karen obviously has become a little bit unhinged. Uh, if you guys want to join our conspiracy theory, we're actually meeting in our pitch black robes by the water fountain to try to plan our next phase of the conspiracy theory, which is sending Karen to the moon. Uh, I'm going to be starting a GoFundMe to buy the rocket ship, so if you guys are interested, be sure to look out for that link. Realistically, though, guys, um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I will keep paying attention, seeing what Karen's up to. I'm going to try my best to keep her being a crazy person because, ah, it's entertaining. It's entertaining. I can't even lie and say that it's not entertaining. 
But uh, on that note, guys, I think that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the video. And of course, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to subscribe if you're new. I upload videos like this every single day. Try my best to put out a good story time. I do updates on Karen as much as humanly possible. But you know, if she doesn't do anything crazy, there's not much to talk about. So uh, yeah, today's notification shout out goes to Quentin Workman 02. Big shout out to you for having on notifications. If you want a notification shout out, all you got to do is send me a screenshot of your notifications on to my Instagram at Scrubby, and I shout somebody out every day. But on that note, have an absolutely incredible day. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. I'm out. Peace. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an incredible day. Uh, I, I was until I got this email, and now I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit stressed out. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you guys. And uh, I would appreciate you guys pressing the like button because I want this video to do well and get out there, and pressing the like button does that because uh, I, I feel like people at YouTube kind of need to see this. Now, uh, before we get into it, I want to tell everyone, I don't think this is YouTube's fault. YouTube obviously has to take privacy concerns pretty seriously because, you know, they don't don't want people having their private information and everything else leaked onto the internet and I totally understand that this is not a video bashing YouTube okay it's really not they're just going off the information that's reported to them but uh, I, I think the information being reported is definitely not what's actually going on here so for those of you guys who have never seen my channel before I have this neighbor that I have issues with that people really enjoy me telling stories about and I've never said her real name I've never said her address I've never said any identifying information about her I've made sure to change enough information to the point where you don't know who it is okay nobody in the world actually knows my neighbor's real identity and that's super important considering what's going on but basically I just tell stories about my neighbor kind of being a psychopath because it's entertaining and it's funny and people seem to really enjoy it and I've, I've like I've said multiple times now made very 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 careful attention is paid to her not having any real information out there I don't want anyone to get dogs I don't want people to go harass my neighbor at all that is not what I want and I've made extra extra sure that I've never said her real name anywhere on my channel at all. But uh, today I woke up and I saw an email in my inbox for YouTube and it basically said the following. Dear Scrubs, this is to notify you that we have received a privacy complaint from an individual regarding your content. The information reported as violating privacy is from 0 seconds to 15 minutes and 10 seconds in this video, which is the most popular video on my channel, which happens to be out of my neighbor. We would like to give you an opportunity to remove or edit the private information with the content reported. After 48 hours of this notice, we will review the complaint for potential violations of our privacy guidelines and consider restricting the content. Please note that you may not need to remove the content entirely in order to resolve the issue because yada 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 basically I can go in and blur blur out any information yada 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 privacy concerns whatever now uh, I, I don't know what you guys think of that email but my biggest problem with it is there's no identifying information anywhere in the video and when YouTube restricts your content I'm pretty sure that if I violate privacy guidelines I I'm gonna get a strike and if you get enough strikes then your channel gets deleted and I have more than enough Karen videos on this channel to, that if every one of them violates her privacy somehow like my, my channel is screwed. And uh, before anybody in the comments is like, no, dude, like, uh, your video might have violated privacy. The video in and of itself, if you go watch it, is literally CSGO surf gameplay that I recorded and me telling a story with every piece of identifying information changed. Like, there's no way you would actually be able to know who Karen, which is what my call my neighbor is. So obviously getting this email definitely made me a little bit concerned because uh, I I'm not trying to break any rules on YouTube, all right? I just want to make content that makes people laugh and smile and uh, not get my channel terminated in the process, okay? I don't want to violate anybody's privacy. I, I don't want to cause any problems for anyone. Now, uh, I know a lot of you guys are thinking like, well, you know, maybe it's not your neighbor. Maybe you can contact somebody. Well, uh, to come to find out, I got a <laughs> anonymous email basically saying, aren't you glad that we figured out a way to get your videos taken down? Like, basically... I, I can't say it was my neighbor with 100% certainty, but I got an email basically taunting me saying that my videos were going to get taken down because I violated their privacy. And it's an argument we've had before that my information is too validating. She tried to get me to give her the ad revenue for the videos. She's just been an overall terrible person throughout this whole process. So I I'm pretty sure it's her doing this. And like I said, I'm not blaming the people at YouTube. I know they're just doing their jobs. They don't want people's private information leaked onto the site. Uh, but I'm not gonna lie, I am a little bit nervous that I'm getting an email basically saying that I have 48 hours to get rid of private information, which there is none in the video. Otherwise, you know, my, my videos are going to get taken down. Like, 
uh, there's nothing for me to fix because there is no private information. But if YouTube's telling me that there's private information in this video that I have to change, I don't know where it is. So obviously I'm a little nervous at the moment because when, whenever, I just, I don't wanna get in trouble with YouTube, okay? I love this, this is my job, it's my career. I don't wanna have any problems with YouTube, but I'm in an awkward position because I'm in trouble for something that I didn't do because some crazy lady that happens to live across the street from me wants to just take away my channel. And uh, for anybody out there, if anyone has found her real information somehow or anybody has done anything like that, like I don't want anyone to ever harass anyone that's on my channel ever. Like that is not what I want, that's not what I'm about. That's really, really not something I've ever even considered being a possibility because I just want to tell stories that entertain people, all right? That's really all I want. So if if for some reason ever in the future anyone's information ever gets leaked from my stories, I, I don't want anyone to go harass anyone. I don't want anyone to cause problems for anyone. That's not what I want. That's not why I do YouTube. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to have a good time with my friends and make videos. And I like I, like I said, if there is no private information, but if somehow there ever would be, I don't want anyone to go send anyone hate or do anything of the sort like that. Uh, if anyone at YouTube is watching this, you can go watch the video itself. I, I changed everybody's names. I changed, you know, the, the dates of the location. I changed the places of the location a little bit so that way people wouldn't be able to figure out any private information. Like, I made extra sure to make sure that nobody would find out any private information because I value my privacy and I wouldn't want it violated. Even if my neighbor's a psychopath is low-key trying to delete my entire channel, you know? I don't want her private information getting leaked at all. Obviously, at this point, uh, I, I feel like things might have gotten a little bit out of hand. Trying to delete my livelihood because uh, you don't like the fact that you're a crazy person definitely isn't up there for me. Like, you know, if you're watching this and you reported it for uh, violating your privacy, you and I both know really, really well I didn't say anything identifying about you. Your privacy is perfectly fine. And the only thing I've talked about is how you're a terrible neighbor who uh, won't leave me alone for just trying to live my life. So big shout out to you for trying to, you know, yeet my channel off the internet. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, hey, you know, <laughs> if we do get in trouble, it's not like we were just about to hit a million subs anyways, you know, like that. <laughs> this is just the worst time for an issue to happen with my channel. Like, honestly, we're on track to hit a million subs in the next like couple weeks. So uh, if there was ever a time for my channel to be in jeopardy now is probably not my favorite time I've ever had it and like I said I, I don't blame YouTube at all but uh you know I would really like this issue to get resolved as peacefully as possible the only other thing that people have told me it could be was that the girl in the thumbnail for the video didn't like it which I changed the thumbnail immediately if, if that ends up being the case somehow miraculously then uh that's been solved but the fact that I got an email basically taunting me for taking down my channel definitely makes me think it was a little bit more malicious than just somebody in a stock image being a, a, a smidge upset and I looked into the stock image itself in the thumbnail and uh, it appears to be in the public domain so I think I'm good on that front too. Now uh, as for what is going to happen I, I obviously like followers a lot but like if you have an Instagram you should follow me at scrubby if anything happens to the channel then I will definitely be posting an update on there and uh, that's probably the best way to get updates on the situation. Um, considering I still have about 24 hours till YouTube gives me an official response to if I've violated privacy, you can go over there. I'll, I'll put as much information as humanly possible over there as I figure it out. Like, I'm still in the dark. Literally everything I know is everything I've already told you. So, as I find things out, I'll try to share it with you guys as much as I can. But, um... Other than that, I do have another channel that's just Scrubby. I don't, I probably, most of you guys know it. It has more subscribers than this one. It's about to hit 1.5 million. Uh, that channel, I don't think, is in any trouble or at risk of losing its standing, which is great because if I lost both, I really don't know what I would do with my life. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically how my day has gone, you know? Usually I like to be more positive in these videos. I like to tell things that are funny and great, but uh, I'm not gonna lie, I am freaking out a little bit at the prospect that my channel might actually lose its good standing with YouTube and get multiple strikes all because some person doesn't like the fact that I'm telling a story about how crazy they are. So uh, yeah, that's how my day has gone. I hope your guys' day has gone a little bit better. I know a lot of you guys started school this week, so I hope that's going incredible. I, I know school's definitely not the favorite thing that everybody has to to deal with but uh you know i hope everybody had an absolutely incredible day if you're new and you've never seen my videos before i tell stories about stupid stuff that i've done on the internet so uh if you're interested in subscribing you know that'd be great uh i don't know how long the channel's gonna be here but you can sub while you still can get that rare exclusive pre 1 million sub swag uh if we end up getting there i don't know what's going on maybe youtube will just terminate me at 999,000. another 999 who, who knows 
But uh, on that note, guys, that's really all the information I have. So hopefully you guys liked the update. I don't want to say enjoyed the video because if you enjoyed the video, to be honest, you're, you're kind of mean. Like this is a uh, this is this is this is not a super swagged out situation. But uh, yeah, I picked the winners of the merch for yesterday. They've been DM'd. It's not going to be the last time I give away merch. So if you didn't win, don't sweat it. Today's notification shout out goes to the one, the only, the indestructible Sauron. He's a good guy, and I, I really appreciate him. So uh, if you want a notification shout out, all you got to do is send a screenshot of you with notifications on to my Instagram at Scrubby and. And I shout somebody out every day. You should also just go and follow me on Instagram just in case, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I can't post here anymore. So, yeah, I hope you guys all have an absolutely incredible day. Uh, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully, like really, really hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow with a regular video. And I'll uh, talk to you guys next time. I'm out. Peace. This is like the most stressful thing I've ever dealt with. So, uh, yeah, GG. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrub here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely incredible day. I know I am. And if you press the like button in the next five seconds, then you'll actually get good luck for the next 13,000 years, and you'll live that long. Guaranteed. This is not a joke. Anyways, what's going on, guys? As you can tell from the title of the video, today we're going to be talking about a crazy mom that, uh, take things a little bit too far. I think everybody's dealt with the Karen before, but this is going to be next level. This isn't my story. It's actually something I found on Reddit, and the post will be in the description down below. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So, before we get to the crazy mom that, you know, tried to get me arrested and ruined the bus ride for everybody else, I have to give you guys a little bit of a backstory, just because most of the details I'm about to tell you are, are going to be important later in the story, I promise. So, basically, I'm a babysitter, right? And I babysit this girl named Mia, who I watch once a week, plus whenever the parents ask me to help out. She's about eight now, and I've babysat her since she's about four months old. So I've literally been in this girl's life since she was born, basically. She's basically my little sister or my cousin at this point, and I spend as much time with her as humanly possible. Whenever her parents need me to babysit, I I'm totally down for it, you know? She's a really easy kid to babysit, and it's not a lot of stress. And, and plus, on top of that, I'm in university, so, like, having the money that I get from babysitting a little extra every here and there definitely helps out and since I like her so much I babysit pretty often and whenever her parents are busy on a Saturday you know they'll usually leave her with me and we'll go on a day trip she loves to go shopping and sightseeing so we'll take the bus or like the car and go to a bigger city and just overall have a good time so there's a bus that goes about an hour away to the next big city. Taking the car means that I have to drive, you know, and uh, it's more expensive than the bus to drive anyways. So I, I, I take the bus with her every time we go to the bigger city just because it's easier. I don't have to drive. I don't have to worry about it. it it's no big deal. And it's a private bus company, though. Basically, when you pay $10 to this company, you get a return ticket, the kid gets to go for free, plus they wait for you on the way back. So, like, if you're a couple minutes late, they wait. And that's super nice. The only thing is, if you're late at all, they give you a late fee. This is going to be important later, I promise. Anyways, being on the bus for an hour is really hard for a kid. I mean, it's hard for me too, mainly because I have ADHD the size of, you know, I, I don't know, something very big like an elephant's anus or whatever. Basically, I, I can't pay attention for very long, but I know it's really hard for kids. So, I brought my old Nintendo DS just for Mia to play while we were on the bus. You know, give you something to do, give you something to have fun doing, whatever. You play, you're quiet, I don't have to pay attention. We, we super win, alright? So, I give her the Nintendo DS when we're on the bus and she's just playing with it. And basically, this 10-year-old boy comes like right behind us in the seat all right no problem you know it, it, it but like you know well whatever what are you gonna do you can't stop someone from sitting behind you on the bus right but the kid who behind us immediately notices the Nintendo DS and I can kind of overhear bits and pieces of the conversation going on behind me and uh, he's kind of like I want to play I want to play mom I want to play and this kid's mom you know not his Nintendo DS by the day goes well go ahead you know like go for it and at this point, overhearing the conversation, I'm like, oh, this little kid's gonna try to get my attention and ask nicely. No. The kid jumps up, reaches over the seat, and, like, tries to snatch it from over the girl I'm babysitting's head, right? So he gets his hand on it for a moment, but then this, like, strap stops him, because I, I make her wear the hand strap on the Nintendo DS. So he pulls it, and the hand strap pulls it back down, right? So I, I make sure that her wrist is fine, because, like, that probably hurt, and I make sure the Nintendo DS doesn't get broken. And then I turn around and, like, have to stop this guy from trying to grab it again, all right? Clearly, you're not John Cena. You tried to grab the Nintendo DS once and already tried to, uh, dislocate this girl's wrist. It, I'm, it's not even your toy. I don't know who you think you are. So I turn around and I'm like, bro, chill. Plus, I don't know who you think you are. Generally, when you're like, hey, mom, I want to play that, and your mom says, go for it, you're like, hey, man, can I borrow your Nintendo DS? You don't just start grabbing at it. Like, I don't know, Bill Cosby grabbing Jello at a house party. Like, that's just not a good look. 
but whatever, you know? So I look back and I'm like, dude, that wasn't cool. And his mom is like, he just wants to play. Let him play too. And so I look at the mom and I'm like, well, maybe if you teach your kid how to ask properly, I'll consider letting him play it, you know? And, and this Karen, this Karen right here snaps back at me and goes, well, he, he just wants to play. Like, don't tell me how to parent my kid. Uh, excuse me, maybe if you parented your kid, this wouldn't be a problem in the first place, right? And the kid kind of yells like, I want to play, I want to play, I want to play, right? And, and she's like, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, I'm going to get it for you. And I'm like, no, it's not yours, you're not getting it, you know, especially because you want to be a Karen and not control your kid, you're done. So I turn back around and sit down, you know, that that's basically the end of it. So our seat is shaking a couple times and the kid behind us is kicking our seat. So Mia, the girl I'm babysitting, turns around and goes, stop. And I warn the mom, I'm like, yo, if your kid doesn't chillax, I'm telling, like I'm, I'm tattling, you know, I will snitch on you. So, and when I say that I'm going to snitch, she looks at me and goes, well, maybe if you gave him the game, he wouldn't be so bored. Like maybe he wouldn't, maybe he wouldn't even be, maybe he wouldn't even care, right? Like, right, give him the game. So I get up and I change seats into another row with, with Mia, right? And then I go to the front to tell the bus driver because he's still kicking my seat and I'm done at this point. And I know like snitching is funny, we'll make fun of it, but if a kid's kicking your seat on the bus and you're gonna be stuck there for an hour, you're probably gonna go tell the bus driver that this kid's being an annoying little turd, right? So I go up and as I'm going, I hear yelling behind me and I turn around and the girl I'm babysitting is like, let go. And this boy has one hand on the game trying to pull it and he's pulling her hair with the other hand. And the mom is smirking as he rips the Nintendo DS and like sits back in his seat, you know? So I storm at him and I'm pissed at this point because I already told you you're not allowed to play it. You already are like attacking th this girl. Like wh who do you think you are to attack this little girl you freak so i grab it from him just like rip it out of his hands you know and he starts screaming and crying and like wah, wah. but it's 8 a.m i i know it's loud i don't care though because you're a bad person the girl i'm babysitting is crying and now i have to deal with your entitled mother and you so the mom has the nerve the audacity to get up after i snatch the nintendo ds back and gets all up in my face and starts yelling at me so the mom gets in my face and starts yelling, you give that back, my son was playing it, right? So the bus driver comes up and he basically pushes her into the row and says, hey, take your seats up front, separates us as much as humanly possible, you know? And the bus driver tells the mom, hey, it's not your game, you can't choose what you do, like, you're, you're not in charge of it. So I kind of zone out and whatever, and then I hear something along the lines of, my son just wanted to try the game and the girls were rude and I demand an apology right so i flip her off and and the kid snickers so she's smiling she gets the game back and i think that's going to be the end of it so we go about our day and we're chilling we go have ourselves a good time or so i think is a good time we just hang out in this big city all day we're, we're living life and we get back to the bus which is at 7 p.m 7 p.m is when we're leaving so we get there at 6 50 which is 10 minutes early and i let mia pick the seats and she picks up front basically and there were another couple and then like a third party that was with us and everything seems okay um, and we all are on the bus, everybody's buckled up, and the driver gets up and he says, hey, we can't leave, there's two people missing, but we're gonna call them, and it should just be a couple more minutes, you know? And like I said, the bus company does wait for people, so, you know, you pay for what you get, it is a late fee if you're late, but hey, that, that's the rule, they said they're wait, so fine. We're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting. So we're waiting, and 7.35 happens, right? So we've been sitting here for like 40 minutes at this point, and the son and the mom that already had the beef walk up to the bus like they have an ice cream cone in their hands they wait outside they finish their ice cream cone like these people were just 40 minutes late to get ice cream not cool so at 7 45 we finally start driving back so everybody else on the bus is obviously annoyed because when you're sitting around for 40 minutes it's not super chill and uh, it, it's not super fun so basically they sit right behind us again but like i'm not gonna say anything i just want to go home we're 40 minutes late they probably learned their lesson or so i hoped so we're kind of chilling and driving and, and the bus driver comes up to her the, because there's two bus drivers on the bus and he says, hey, I'm sorry to bother you, but you caused a 45 minute delay and we're going to fine you for that, you know? And the mom goes, fine me? Like, you're not going to fine me, okay? They were told that the ride would wait and that's how it is. And he says, hey, you signed the paper. If you're late, we're going to fine you. And she's like, oh, no one told you that. No one told me that. And he's like, well, you know, you signed it. I need your ID so I can process the fine. And she's like, no. And so the bus driver at this point's had enough, and he goes, all right, well, I'll tell the police, because, like, that's the rules. That's what you agreed to. So he goes and sits back down. And suddenly, 
as they're arguing, the little boy pops up right next to me, alright? He, like, literally ghosted into me. He Danny phantomed right next to me, and I already don't like this because I almost punted him like a football across. And he says, I want the game. And I'm like, yeah, I told you this morning, no. And it's still a no. And he, like, does this sad face and goes back to his mom. And uh, it's dark outside. So the girl I was babysitting is kind of, like, asleep playing with the Nintendo DS on my lap, you know? Like... She, she's laying on the seat, and I had my jacket in my, like, lap, so she's using that as a pillow, and she's kind of asleep. So I, I turn off the game, but it's still on her wrist, like, the sling's there. And suddenly, the mom is, like, hovering above me, too. I don't know how this entire family Danny Phantom is on me, and she's like, oh, he she's done playing. And I'm like, and? And so she's like, my son can play now. And I'm like, no, it's my game. He's not getting it. And she's like, no, just give it to him, okay? Like, you're too old for it. He wants it. And I said, I don't care. It's mine. And I said, no, so leave me alone. And she's like, what gives you the right? And starts yelling at me. And I'm afraid that she's going to wake up the kid. So I'm like, I own it, you know? Like, I, I own it. Please don't wake up the kid. It's mine. I don't have to have a reason. If I own it, I don't have to give it to you, period. So she's like, oh, well, she's asleep. I, she doesn't need it now. And I'm like, all right, well, it's tied to her wrist, and I'd have to wake her up to get it, and I would be playing then, not your son. It's my game, so I'm telling you again, go away. So she turns around, and the bus driver turns around and, like, gives us a stern look. And I'm figuring he's listening, right? So they moved a few rows back, and so I think I've won. I think I'm good. A few minutes later, I'm, like, texting on my phone, just having a normal conversation and not paying attention. And suddenly, I feel like a hand on my leg. And at first, I'm like, oh, whatever, it's the kid's leg. No big deal. And then suddenly the kid wakes up and starts screaming. And, like, I almost dropped my phone. And there is the boy between my legs. He had crawled underneath the three rows of seats to try to come up and snatch the game. Like, his hand was on my leg. And the kid had woken up to hurt his face, like, inches away from hers. So I'm pissed at this point. So the driver doesn't cause an accident due to the scream, but he stops. And both drivers are furious. The boy's crying. The mom is screaming at me for making him cry. And all while I'm unable to have, like, the situation in hand because it's late and I'm holding some crying eight-year-old so a man from the other couples gets up and s silences the situation and the mom's like this selfish girl scared my baby she screamed in his face and the bus driver's like what was your son doing under the seat I want this girl off the bus now and he's like why wasn't your son seated he's a good child he can do whatever he wants is his excuse and I'm sorry call me crazy here but if your kid is good behavior it doesn't mean they don't have to wear a seatbelt on a bus or like be in their seat you know that's sus that's really sus so the kid's crying and he's like I want the game and she's like you owe me the game um so I'm trying to calm some everybody down and he reaches for the game and so I pushed the kid which I shouldn't have done I pushed him a little bit and he fell against his mom so I, I kind of like get up in his face and I'm like, don't touch me or the game again. And now the mom's like, you hurt my baby. And so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm triggered at this point. I'm not going to lie. I'm having a really hard time keeping it together. So I basically say, you should be very lucky he's underage. Otherwise, I would beat him right now. You tried to steal my game. He crawls up to me. He's probably, he's like touching my leg. It's sus. You are very lucky that I don't call CPS and get your kid taken away from you. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's over. And when I say that, she's like, you have no right to talk to me like that. You made my kid cry and you owe him the game. He deserves it. And he starts reaching at me. So she's trying to get the game from the kid. And I'm a pretty big kid, you know? I'm, I'm a pretty big, big guy compared to her. So I basically push the woman back, which, again, I probably shouldn't have done. And now the bus drivers are holding him back. And she's screaming and thrashing around, throwing punches and insults while demanding that I give the kid the game. Like, yes, you are trying to fight me on the bus, but I'm still going to give your kid the Nintendo DS. D don't even worry about it. All right, so I'm chilling. I sit back down, and I hear her, like, whispering into the phone because she says that she's going to call the police. So I'm sure she's telling the police some long story about, like, like, what happened and you know all, all this crazy stuff so she's exaggerating trying to make it seem like I'm evil so I get up and tell the drivers and they look mortified and say they contacted the police themselves so basically I go sit back down and I'm trying to chill I'm trying to chill and 45 minutes later there's eight cops waiting for us when we get to the end of the thing so uh, the the girl's mom who is gonna pick her up seems to have already talked to the police already and we're, we're all chilling and the kids okay I was scared that like I was gonna traumatize this little girl obviously that's not the good thing and uh, the the son and the mother are getting questioned in the ambulance that they had called and the rest of us are getting questioned as well so the surveillance cameras and drivers back up what I'm saying and the mom is busted lying you know she gets banned from the bus company and is charged with all this stuff and we we <laughs> We finally get to go. Like, the cops are like, yeah, whatever, you're fine. Don't even sweat it. Don't even sweat it. Don't even sweat it. Like, no big deal, you know? 
So after all of this has gone down, I'm pretty sure that's the end of it. We're never going to see these people again. Clearly the mom got banned from the company. There's nothing else that can go on. So the next weekend we're hanging out again. All right. So I get a warning for pushing the kid and the, the mom is like trying to push charges and everything's fine. Like it's no big deal at all. Everything's solid. It's everything solid. So she gets fined and I think that's going to be the end of it. So when we're getting on the bus, I see a kid in line who looks familiar, but he's with his dad this time. So as we're driving off, she pulls out the Nintendo DS and the boy, the same boy comes up to us and goes, give me that, you know? So I'm like, how are you supposed to ask for things that aren't yours, you know? And the kid's like, I want the game now. And I'm like, nah, you need to have some manners. Like, I'm not giving it to you. And so he goes like, dad, he, she won't give it to me. Like the girl won't give it to me. And so this big dude gets up and starts walking over to the seat. And thankfully one of the bus drivers on the bus was like one of the two from the last time we did this. So he recognizes the entire situation and says, I need to see your ID. You know, where's your parents? And then the dad's like, my son only asked to try the game. And I'm like, yeah, that's why he got banned last month. You know, you have to get off the bus or I'm going to call the police. And the dad's like, I bought tickets. You know, I have the right to ride. And the police were called straight away. We stopped and the father ends up getting arrested for resisting police in fraud and turns out they had both signed in under fake names to try to get onto the bus which i mean just drive like I i'm sorry if you get banned from the bus why don't you just understand you can't ride the bus anymore like i don't know that that's my logical explanation but uh yeah moral of the story is don't try to steal what's not yours and then blame it on everybody else because you will get caught and banned from the bus but I, I guess for some people they don't really care about getting banned from the bus and uh, yeah, on that note, guys, that's kind of all there is to it. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. I'd really appreciate it. Today's notification shout out goes to the one, the only, weird friend Will. Big shout out to you for having on notifications. If you want a notification shout out, all you got to do is turn on notifications, send a screenshot to me on Instagram, and I'll shout you out. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another video. Don't get anyone pregnant. And if you do, make sure they're hot and have a beautiful, sunshiny day. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. Your neighbor will become a Karen. Yeah, that's right. I, I have that magic power that will turn your neighbor into Joseph Stalin of neighbors. And trust me, you, you don't want that because uh, it's a very terrible experience. So uh, as you guys can tell, today we're going to be talking about Karen. I, I really thought this series were over. I really, really did. I thought she was finally going to leave me alone after last time. But apparently she just didn't get the memo. And uh, honestly, the start of this, I, I thought was going to be absolutely fantastic. Like when I first had this situation start going down, I was like, ah, finally. She's realized that she looks like an absolutely psychotic woman who's just out of control. But apparently, you know, um, everything in life isn't made equally because uh, she's still a psycho. For those of you that don't know the Karen story, I have this neighbor that found out I was a YouTuber and like asked me to delete my channel because it was a bad influence on her son and all this other stuff that I just don't really care about. Like, hey, you know, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but I don't really care if uh, I'm a bad influence on your son. I make videos and if your son watches them, that's just not my responsibility. And after that led to a series of misfortunate events basically where Karen is just a psychopath who is up to no good. And uh, things quieted off for a little bit. I definitely thought we were over this because she tried to get my channel deleted and failed. And I thought after that, you know, I was hope free. There's no way she'd be dumb enough to keep trying. Anyways, yesterday morning I was sitting on the couch just uh, doing my thing, watching some cartoons, not really up to too much, and I heard the knock on my door. And when you ever care a knocks, it sounds like, you know, someone's just angrily trying to beat their way into a prison. Just like, oh, 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 open up. Open up! Like, it's it's like the FBI is coming. So, I kind of knew it was up, and, you know, here we go again. Great, I have to deal with my neighbor. So, I open the door, and uh, Karen is sitting there looking very frustrated, and she says, well, it took you long enough. And, like, honestly, I, I was pretty quick to the door this time, all right? I'm sorry I'm not an Olympic door opener like you expect me to be, Karen, but I'm out here trying my absolute hardest, and you're just being a snake. So, she looks at me, and she goes, I need to talk to you about something. And I'm like, uh, okay, well, what do you need to talk about? And she says, I just wanted to apologize. And, you know... Uh, I'm a pretty forgiving person, I'm pretty chill, but after you've uh, tried to get my livelihood taken away and delete my channel and threaten me and break into my house, I'm not exactly the uh, friendliest guy, you know? I didn't exactly take these words very seriously because anyone can say, ah oh, yeah, my bad, my bad for being a psycho, but it's another thing to actually mean it. So, 
I kind of looked at her and I'm like, well, you know, you kind of went off the deep end a little bit. And she's like, yeah, I know. And I apologize. I just got carried away. I took things personally when I shouldn't have. I know you're a good kid. I actually watched some of your, more of your videos. You're a funny guy. And I'm like, all right, well, you know what? No harm, no foul. We're neighbors. I don't plan on moving anytime soon. It's probably easier to just say we get along, you know, like, hey, clap your hands. Everybody get together. Everything's fine. Karen, you know, we, we can be boys. We can be boys. Sure. I mean, actually, we're not going to be friends, but I forgive you. I guess I can get over the fact that you were a psycho who tried to get my livelihood taken away just this once, but uh, I'm obviously never going to be close to you, okay? We're never going to go out and get coffee together. I'm never going to yell at the manager with you by my side, but, you know, you're fine. No harm, no foul. And she says, okay, that's all, and leaves. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, th that was easy. She just wanted to apologize. I guess everything's good now. I can start, you know, going outside again without feeling like my tires are going to get slashed. This is a step in the right direction. But as you guys know with Kara, nothing is ever that simple, all right? Nothing is ever actually as it appears. So that was yesterday, and uh, the rest of the day was pretty chill. I went about my day. I uploaded a story time. Typical day. Just really didn't do anything too differently. I didn't feel like anything was off at all. And, uh, you know, this morning, I'm just chilling here, uh, getting ready to make another video, a story time that wasn't about Karen that'll be out tomorrow, and I hear the knocking on my door. Oh, Ryan! And I'm like, oh, great, here we go. I wonder what's going on. So I open the door, and she goes, excuse me, I apologize to you. And I'm like, yeah, and I said it was fine. She's like, well, you didn't delete your videos. And I'm like, um... Okay, well, you know, you, you kind of have broken into my house and tried to get my channel deleted. I didn't realize that you apologizing was you trying to get the videos taken down. If that's what you want, I'm sorry, the videos are staying up. Like, I I'm not taking down the videos, okay? There's only about five videos on this channel with 250-something videos that actually involve Karen. So, I'm telling her, yeah, you know, uh, I didn't realize that you were like, oh, if I apologize, they'll take down the video. That's not the how this is gonna go. I'm not taking down the videos. Nothing like that is gonna happen. I'm sorry. You're kind of on your own there. And, uh, I realize her eyes change, okay? I don't know if you've ever seen an animal, like a shark, go into attack mode where their eyes just go black and the only thing that you can see is them attempting to bite somebody's arm off. But that's what her face looks like. And she just starts shrieking, Why would I ever apologize to you without to get the videos down? That's the only thing I've ever cared about. You think I'd apologize to you for any other reason than taking down the videos? And, uh, Karen, I know you're watching this. Let me explain this to you. You absolutely ape-brained moron, okay? Um, if you apologize to somebody to get something and then they don't do it, you want to know how to make sure that you never get it, you go to their door and you tell them that you never met your apology and that you hope they get hit by a car. Like, that's just a general rule of thumb on what not to do. But whatever, this soccer mom is yelling at my face. And I'm gonna be honest, I've been pretty nice to Karen. Don't get me wrong, I've yelled at her maybe once or twice, but for the most part, I've been pretty chill. But at this point, I just slammed the door in her face, okay? I did. I was like, I'm, I'm not dealing with this. She's yelling at me, calling me a terrible person because I won't delete the videos just because she apologized. Like, oh, you know, if you just apologize, then everything's chill. We don't need laws anymore. I mean, if you hit someone with your car, just, hey, sorry. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, 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 chill, chill, super fine. So... I'm like, I slammed the door in her face, and I think that's it. I don't even think it's story-worthy. Yeah, she came to my house, she freaked out, I slammed the door in my face, no big deal. But, uh, as soon as I close the door, the banging starts again, and it just keeps going, and I just ignore it, alright? I take my dogs upstairs, I'm just petting them in bed, the door banging on the door is still going on, like, she she's still just hammering away at the door, like, no tomorrow. And then, it stops for a second, I'm like, oh, she must have gotten tired. And it comes back about five minutes later. Knock, knock, dum, 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 dum. Just uh, banging, but there's like two. I can clearly tell there's two fists on the door, which means either Karen has gone full ra rabies mode, like maybe she has rabies and is banging on the door with both fists, or her husband is with her now. And uh, me and her husband don't exactly get along either. I thought he was chill at first. <laughs> Turns out he's crazy too. So I open the door and the husband's there. He goes, my wife apologized to you. And I'm like, yeah, she did. He's like, so you're going to delete the videos? No. That's not how this works, bro. Like, that that's not how this works. And he looks at me and he goes, Do you have any idea how rude it is to disrespect your elders? Haven't your parents taught you how to respect people older than you? And, uh, like I said, I've been pretty nice. I feel like I've deserved a snap. So I look this, uh, old haggity man in the eyes with his face so wrinkly it looks like an elephant's testicle. And I said, Get off my property, dude. I don't care that you and your wife are upset that I keep making story times about you. Every time you come knock on my door from now on, I will make a video, and I will make more money off the video than you will ever make, ever, okay? So shut up and go away. I don't care that you're upset about the videos. Your apology doesn't mean that I have to delete anything off my channel. And the fact that you're such a slack-jawed, just, ooh, I, I said some not nice words. I have to, I have to censor myself a little bit. Slack-jawed idiot. 
is mind-blowing to me. Just because you apologize doesn't mean anything. Now get off my property. And the husband, you know what this guy does? He sticks the foot in the door so I can't close it. So I can't close it and says, you don't have any right to speak to me that way. Dog, you have no right to speak to me this way. I'm 20 years old. I don't need to take this from anybody, all right? Call my mom if you really feel like that's what you need to do because apparently you think my parents are still in charge. Call them. I don't care, dog. I, I don't care. Go ahead. Call. Call her up. Hey, what's up? Your son's being mean. I, she can call me and complain too. I don't care. I don't have to listen to my mom anymore, bro. Get out. Like, leave. So I shoved him back. So his foot was out of the door and I slammed the door. And I'm like, don't come back. I'm done. Don't come back. And uh, I, I hear knocking again. Now they're just pounding on the door screaming. And I'm like, dog, this this is ridiculous, okay? So I just go back upstairs and I go back to watching TV. I don't even care. And then me and Grant were trying to record a video and they're still pounding on the door. Like, I, we can't work. We can't record. We can't do anything because these idiots were just pounding on the door. So finally... I take matters into my own hands, right? And um, I, I, I called the cops. I know what you guys are thinking. Like, probably you shouldn't have done that. You guys probably uh, disagree. But, hey, they called the cops on me enough. I, they, they're, like, you know, getting increasingly aggressive. They won't stop pounding on my door. I can't work. My dogs are freaking out. Like, I don't know. I felt like I had a right to finally actually do something about it. So I call the cops and let them know what's going on. And uh, they come over. And sure enough, the husband's like, he assaulted me by slamming the door on my foot. And the cop's like, well, why was your foot in his door? Like, was he trying to close the door? Like, you uh, you don't have the right to prevent him from leaving. Like, you, you guys shockingly do not have the power to prevent someone from closing their door. Right? And the husband's all mad. And the cops are like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I don't want to press charges or anything. Can we please, please just get a legal order that if they come over here again... They're going to jail. Like, is that a thing? He's like, well, we can't do a legal order, but what we can say is if they get cited for, you know, trespassing again, if they come onto your property, then you can have them arrested. And I'm like, yes, tell them that. I'm, I'm like, verbally warning them if they come back onto my property, I'm going to have them arrested. And the cop's like, okay, no big deal. Uh, I know we've been here a lot for this. And, uh, you know, he, he like kind of implied that uh, I was more patient than I should have been to ask for this. Like he, he kind of was saying how I've been way too nice to these crazy people because obviously they're never going to learn to just shut up and go away on their own. So, uh, yeah, that, that's how my day went. Thankfully, ever since then, I've actually been able to record and get work done. I'm recording this video right after everything uh, calmed down. I'm, I'm really annoyed. It's like 2.30 right now. I've been dealing with this since like 10 in the morning. Uh, I don't know why you guys are home on a Thursday. Like, don't you have jobs, okay? Do you, do you have a way to keep your house? I have a job. My job is to make videos, okay? And you guys keep interrupting that. So how about I show up to your work and I unplug your computer and throw it at you, Karen, you dumb bimbo. Uh, I, I, I know I don't sound in a good mood right now. That's because I'm, I'm just tired of it, bro. I'm done. I don't want to deal with this anymore. My neighbor is a psycho and I, I, I'm, I, everything, everything I could have possibly done to keep this PG and resolve it in the best way possible. They're just not letting happen. So that, that's how my day went. Um, I knew you guys would want an update on Karen and honestly, I wasn't going to make a video, but the fact that they're so adamant that I don't make another video just makes me want to make it more. So, uh, congratulations, big brain IQ. You guys made me make another video. So smart. You guys are brilliant. And if I get a knock on my door, you're going to jail and trust me, neither one of you would do very well in prison. But uh, that's going to do it for the video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. Today's notification shout-out goes out to Raxford Memes. Big shout-out to you, bro, for uh, being a stud and having on notifications. If you want that, just send a screenshot of your notifications on over to my Instagram, at Scrubby, and I shout somebody out every day. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure you're hot. And uh, Karen, I dare you to come knock on my door again. I dare you. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. Your neighbor will turn into a Karen. Yes, that's right. If you love your freedom and being able to wake up late on a Saturday afternoon, I highly suggest you press the like button. Otherwise, me and your neighbors will actually flip places and that's not fun. Boy, oh boy, has uh, the last day been eventful, alright? I know that <laughs> I kind of told Karen that if she kept 
kept it up, there were going to be consequences. But Karen, bless her heart, was actually smart enough to figure out quite the loophole that I'm going to be telling you guys about today. For those of you guys who don't know who Karen is, it's just my neighbor who has a massive beef with my YouTube channel for, uh, honestly no reason. She just thinks it's a bad influence for her kid, and instead of being like, hey kid, don't watch Scrubby's YouTube videos, she just tries to have beef with me instead. But, uh, yeah, as you guys can tell from the title, <laughs> my neighbor, uh, my neighbor made some allies, all right? And I'm gonna be telling you guys about that today, so without further ado, uh, let's get into it. So the last time I really talked to Karen, it was basically me saying that if she continued to come knock on my door, I was gonna get her cited for trespassing and uh, sent her to jail, which might be the most lame thing to go to jail for, all right? Like, if I'm gonna spend time behind bars, if I'm gonna spend time dropping the soap, I'm at least going to jail for something cool, okay? Like, I don't know, parachuting off the Empire State Building without a permit, or like, uh, impersonating Takashi 6 9 outside of a federal prison, that type of stuff, alright? I'm not going to jail for anything lame. So, I kinda knew that Karen was probably gonna back off because I like to have the same idea, alright? Like, oh, what are you in prison for? Trespassing? It is just not the same, but... Regardless, Karen being Karen, which is this the most Karen thing of all time, decided that she couldn't let me have the last laugh, okay? At this point, I had basically all but one. I was kind of saying, hey, I'm not going to delete my channel. Every time I talk about you, I'm getting paid more money. And on top of all of this, officially, if you come knock on my door again, then it is totally in my hands to send you to jail. And I don't think Karen liked that because she's what we call a control freak, you know? The type of person who, if she's not in control, is actually having a mental breakdown. Like, I don't know if Karen had ever heard the word no before, okay? I'm pretty sure she carries colored sunglasses around that make red lights look like green lights because she just hates being told no that much. She's T-boned 37 grandmas in minivans this month alone just based on the fact that she just... <laughs> doesn't like the word no. So when the police basically told her that she was forced to leave me alone, otherwise I now had the legal ability to press charges, that must have pissed off Karen pretty bad because, uh, well, <laughs> things, things have changed a little bit. So today I wanted to go to the grocery store and get some food, all right? It's a pretty normal thing. About once a week, I'll just go to the grocery store for like maybe an hour or two to get all the food for the house for the week. And I just think it's funny that as soon as I leave my house and I'm not home to check the security cameras or see who's coming by, uh, I come home to a note stapled, or not stapled, you can't staple through metal, taped to my garage door as I'm coming in to park the car. This is what I see <laughs> proudly plastered in the middle of my garage door. Dear Scrubs, this is the coalition of neighborhood moms letting you know that you've gone too far. You continue to air your neighbor and yours feud for profit and we will tolerate it no more. We are filing a complaint with the HOA and this will stop now. And uh, first couple things. First of all, the Coalition of Neighborhood Moms might be the least threatening organization name that you could have ever chosen. Like, alright, I would have been more scared of the Coalition of Teddy Bears. Oh, the Coalition of Neighborhood Moms. Wow, are all 47 of you who have nothing better to do all day than to complain about me actually gonna team up for some Avengers level threat, alright? Is my YouTube channel Thanos to you guys? Like, all the Neighborhood Moms together getting the Infinity Stones, alright? They have every one of the Neighbors videos I've made ready to go complain to people. So, uh, yeah, you're not a very threatening organization. Sorry, a bunch of soccer moms doesn't strike fear into my heart like it did when I was, I don't know, seven. But on top of that, okay, you guys are going to complain to the HOA about my videos. For those of you guys that don't know what an HOA is, it's a homeowners association, and it's basically a group of people that uh, are just there to make sure that you don't have, like, empty toilets on your lawn or aren't lighting your backyard on fire every day and disturbing the neighbors. They're, you know, important, I guess, but they really can't do anything. And trust me, the Coalition of Neighborhood Moms, whatever that is, uh, I'm pretty sure the contract that I signed to keep trash out of my yard said nothing about me making YouTube videos about one of you, who I have no idea who it is, being a freak and coming and bothering me about me being a YouTuber all the time, alright? Like, I'm 97% sure that was never in any agreement I signed when moving into this neighborhood. Imagine how weird that would have been. Hey, uh, we know you're moving in. Can you just sign this paper letting everybody know that you won't make a YouTube video if your neighbor won't leave you alone? Yeah, ooh. We've just had some serious problems in the past with this one neighbor who's an absolute freak. So, uh, yeah, we just want to prepare you. <laughs> so if you could just sign this, we'd appreciate it. Like, that that was never a conversation. I never had that conversation, so you can complain to the HOA. And also, Karen, 
Did you really go around to the other five bored housewives that have just been sitting there doing nothing all day to get this done? Like, really? Come on. The, the least you could have done is continue knocking on my door so I can get you for trespassing. The second I, like, I don't know, actually do something about you being a bully, you go, ha, huh, that's it. Better get the other soccer moms together. Do you have, like, the bat signal ready to get all the women together after soccer practice to write a threatening note and put it on my driveway? Like, oh no, guys, uh, the error in my ways has been proven. My neighbor breaking in wasn't enough for me to be scared, but now that she left a passive-aggressive note on my garage door, I really think I'm going to have to rethink things and how I'm approaching it because clearly this isn't working. And I know that soccer moms who clearly have enough free time on their hands to write passive-aggressive notes and put it on my garage door are obviously going to come and see by if I've seen the notes. So I decided to do the generous thing and flip over the same piece of paper and uh, write a note back. So this is what I jotted down in return. Now, I personally enjoy uh, having a clear message, okay? I don't like to play games. I don't like people to guess what I'm thinking. So I just made it very clear right away exactly how I felt about their little passive-aggressive note. And uh, so my note says... <clears throat> To whom it may concern, no, scrubs. Because to be completely honest, I don't really care if you complain to the HOA about me uh, talking about my neighbor's problems. To be honest, if you want me to stop talking about my neighbor's problems, maybe, hear me out, uh, don't go create an organization called the Coalition of Moms and threaten to complain to the HOA about something that's not against the rules. Like... Maybe maybe if you guys didn't keep giving me ammunition to talk about I would stop talking about it I know what you're thinking Ryan. You're, you're just being too logical, but I'm being honest with you If you guys would just leave me alone <laughs> this problem would stop existing So I left my note and uh, I, don't, I don't know how they felt about it All right All I know is that I went outside about two hours ago and the note was removed from my garage door And I asked everybody who has been over or, or lives here and they all said that they had nothing to do with it moving which means Means that the coalition of moms have officially uh, d taken a taken a gander at my notes. All right, and <laughs> it is it's it's Thursday right now, so I'm gonna try to give this another day to develop a little bit, and uh, hopefully I have something to tell you guys about tomorrow. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to bed for now. So if this video keeps going, if there's more time, then that means something happened. All right, guys, uh, it's been another eventful day. Today, I've actually had a gang of soccer moms try to intimidate me, and it's not very intimidating, but uh, let's let's get into that. So today, I, I told you guys that my note was gone, so I expected something to happen just because I know the way that these soccer moms operate now. I've dealt with Karen enough to realize that they're just not going to stop bugging you. There's nothing you can do about it. The reality situation is they really like to annoy you and feel important, so I knew the second my phone was gone, or not my phone, the note was gone, and I had kind of been passive-aggressive and told them no, there was going to be something coming my way. And uh, it was Friday morning, which, I mean, is usually a pretty good morning. I actually really, really enjoy Fridays. And for the most of the day, nothing really happened. It was around 3 p.m. my time when I heard a knock on the door. And shockingly, it wasn't the banging on the door that Kara normally does. My my neighbor who I've had the most problems with has a way of banging on the door that would make even the most, like, hardcore Marine Navy SEAL man slightly scared because it's just so angry and violent that you're not really sure what's about to come through the door. All you know is there might be a Velociraptor fidgeting with the door handle trying to get inside your house. So I hear this knock and I go open it and there are five Karens just standing on my porch looking at me, okay? And I've dealt with Karens, but shockingly, one, my neighbor is not there. Like, there are just five uh, very obviously bored soccer moms kind of standing there giving me this like frustrated look. One of them's tapping their foot, one of them has their arms crossed, and I'm like, oh great, here we go, it's going down. So I say, hello, how may I help you? And they go, we're the Coalition of Neighborhood Moms, and we just wanted to talk about this little note that you responded with. Do you think this is cute? And they put up my note where I said no, and I said, no ma'am, I, I don't think that's cute. I think it's uh, the honest answer to what happens when a bunch of people anonymously leave a note on my door for like the hour I'm not in my house a week, and uh, very obviously are not being influenced by anyone else. And they're like, well, it's just, we're not being influenced by anyone. No one told us to do this. We just think it's dramatically unfair how you've treated our friend and think that you continuing to air this dirty laundry for profit is disgusting and just unneighborly. Uh, I hate to break it to you, ladies. It's not 1955 anymore. I'm 20 years old. I don't plan on living in this house forever. So being neighborly really doesn't matter to me, okay? Like, and you know what? 
Isn't it so weird that the only neighbor I've had any beef with is the one who won't leave me alone? Like, if I was really such a bad neighbor, something tells me the entire neighborhood would be knocking on my door every day telling me how terrible I was, but isn't it so funny that the only people that can complain about me being a terrible neighbor are the people that, uh, for some reason feel like they're more important than me and, like, their needs come before my job? Isn't that weird? So, at this point, I'm kind of looking at him and I'm like, alright, well, I'm sorry that you have beef with me having beef with my neighbor like I don't know why you're upset it doesn't involve you at all and to be frank with you I don't care about being neighborly it's none of your concern which they just think is the worst thing ever you know did your mom raise you to not be neighborly is it's a relationship with your neighbors not important to you once again no I really don't care if my neighbors like me like yes it makes life easier with my neighbors liking me but most of my neighbors do like me the only ones that don't are soccer moms with too much free time on their hands all right most other people I'm pretty chill with I ain't got no beef with anyone like the only person I have beef with is people who won't leave me alone I'm living and let living if you guys don't want to watch my videos and don't want to let your kids watch my videos then don't and I don't get your concern so at this point they're kind of realizing that their threat and them kind of trying to guilt trip me into being nice to people just to be nice to people isn't working so then they start pulling out the stops that they just think are like absolutely insane okay I don't really know what they were thinking but they try to threaten me and say what would your parents think like wouldn't you be so embarrassed if if your parents found out that you were doing this online like wouldn't you be ashamed of yourself if your mom and dad knew what you were doing which you know, my parents know I do YouTube, first of all. Second of all, I'm an adult, to be honest with you. If my mom doesn't like that I'm making fun of my neighbor, she can do that. And one of them says, I did go to high school with your father, so wouldn't it be just a shame if we gave him a call right now and discussed it? And I said, gladly, I'll call my dad right now. And I pulled out my phone and I called my dad. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna I'm call my dad right now. We're gonna get my dad calling in the video just so he can tell you guys what he thinks too. Yo, dad. Yeah? Uh, do you remember when I had to call you earlier because those soccer moms were yelling at me? Yes. Um, do you care if I make fun of my neighbor if she's being a psychopath? I don't care. Like, okay, when well, they were like, oh, are you ashamed of your son? Were you like, yes, I am deeply ashamed, or did you just not care? I, you're, they're crazy. I don't know what they're, what they're, if they didn't act like that, you wouldn't make fun of them. Exactly. Okay, thank you, Dad. <laughs> thank you. I love you. So as you can tell, even Papa Scrubster himself does not care at all. So your threats of like, oh, I'm going to tell your mom and dad because they'd be ashamed of you isn't going to work. And I think at this point they realize that like the HOA is not going to do anything. I don't know if they just think I'm stupid, okay? Because they're like, we'll contact the HOA. And then as soon as I point out that I don't care, I never signed anything saying I wouldn't make fun of my neighbors, they're like, well, then we'll call your dad. I, I think they're so desperate to try to get me to stop for some reason that they uh, just are making stuff up. And, and let me break it down for you coalition of moms because I'm, I'm figuring you're watching this leave me alone i won't keep making fun of you if you don't keep giving me ammunition like you you think a team of soccer moms sitting on my porch is gonna slow me down sick do you understand the level of clickbait you've given me now all my fans know that it's a 1v5 every time i step outside to mess with my neighbor like sick you you guys just gave me more videos for a month do you not understand that you're doing the exact opposite of want you what you want me to do? Hey, you know what? We want him to stop making fun of our crazy neighbors. So let's form a coalition and try to take him down from the inside with a team of soccer moms. Sick. Sick game plan. 500 IQ. You guys are the smartest people I've ever encountered. And the best part about all of these soccer moms standing on my doorstep, right, is none of them are even on my street. She literally had to go through the neighborhood, like, blocks away to find people that were upset. All the neighbors on my street, every man's wife, every mother, every every single woman who owns a house on my street, right, has not complained. In fact, the only thing they've said is that they're sorry that I have to deal with my psycho neighbors. So, I don't know what big brain 500 IQ standpoint you're on, but do you think I really care about being neighborly to people who live four streets away from me? Like, oh, oh my goodness, we, we live within three miles of each other? Ah. You're, you're right, I should I should care about your opinion. No, I don't. So, this team of soccer moms on my doorstep realizes that they're not gonna make me chill. They threaten to, you know, call my dad, which I'm an adult, I, I don't care. And then when I called my dad and said, yo, do you mind that I'm doing this? And he said no, uh, I think they were kind of out of options. So, they just said that this wasn't over and they're gonna go comb through the law book because they know that I'm doing something illegal. And please, ladies, enlighten me.
because uh, unlike most people, I'm not going to jail for trespassing, all right? If I'm going down for standing up for my rights for a Karen, then every person who's ever worked a retail job in their entire life will pay for my legal fees because I can guarantee you that I'm just doing what every person who's ever been yelled at by a soccer mom has wanted to do, which is stand up to you guys because uh, I'm not caving. I'm sorry. So... Yeah, that's the update. This is a really long video, but the Karen fight is now going to be a saga of me versus a coalition of neighborhood moms. Um, Karen herself is definitely behind this, okay? She's like the evil villain sitting in the chair petting the white cat. I, I just know she is because why would these moms from like 18 blocks away come together randomly to attack me after Karen no longer can? It, it, the timing is just, it's just too good. But uh, yeah. That's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I really would appreciate pressing the like button on this. I want this video to get out there. I want this video to get some support. So if you could press the like button, I would really appreciate it. On that note, though, guys, if you're new, subscribe. I upload videos like this every single day. So if you turn on the notification bell, then you will never miss any of that. And, you know, never missing that is a good thing. Today's notification shout-out goes to the one, the only, Brody Henning. Big shout-out to you, dog, for being an absolute G unit. If you want a notification, shout out just turn on the notification send a screenshot to me over on my instagram at scrubby and i shout somebody out every day but on that note have an absolutely incredible day and hopefully i'll see you guys next time in another video don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot i'm out peace What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. I'll never fill you guys in on Karen again. Yes, that's right. I know you guys love these, so press the like button if you want more Karen stories because uh, there's been some developments going on ever since I got to San Diego. Anyways, as you guys know, I've been in San Diego for this last week for TwitchCon, just hanging out, booling, just doing stuff with the boys. I met some pretty cool YouTubers and I've been having my Myself a great time, but I do have little beagles at home, two dogs that are uh, pretty adorable. If you want to see how adorable they are, you are always more than welcome to head over to Instagram at Scrubby and check it out. You know, not that I would ever demand that you follow me on Instagram, but I mean, there, there are cute dogs there if you're interested. And regardless, since I was going to be in San Diego for a week and Grant was coming with me because he's been on the channel a lot and he wants to get into the YouTube thing, I needed somebody to feed my dog. So I ended up paying my little brother, who is 13, to ride his bike over to my house every day and feed my dogs. It's a pretty simple job, you know. I was just paying them a little bit, and I told all my neighbors around me, except for Karen, that my brother was going to be coming over. So if you saw a kid on a bike, like, going into my house, it was probably my little brother, and it was going to be no big deal, right? You know, typ typical thing. You just want your dogs to not starve. The last thing I wanted to do was come home to my dog sitting there looking like a kid in a UNICEF commercial. For just pennies a day, you can feed dogs like this. Like, that wasn't on my agenda. I love my puppies, so I just wanted them to get fed. So I, I told my little brother that he could do it. He lived, like, a mile away via bike ride, so he would just bike ride over there in the morning and at night, feed the dogs, and then he could go home and do whatever he wanted, but that, that's been what's going on. Somebody's been there to feed my dogs and make sure that they're safe, because I love puppies. And, uh, as you guys remember from the last Karen story, I've officially gotten fed up. It's gotten to the point now where I've kind of told her that if she gets involved in anything, then uh, I, I'm just gonna get her arrested. Like, I'm over it, I'm not really dealing with her anymore, she's pretty insane, but when I was out of town, I guess she thought for some reason that threat no longer applied, because my poor brother, who is 13, and like the nicest kid ever. Anybody who knows my little brother, which I don't think most of you guys do, he is just such a sweet kid with a pure heart. Like, he never gets in trouble. I remember one time when we were a little bit younger, I think I was maybe 13 and he was like 7, uh, we, we broke the rules and the kid cried himself to sleep because he felt so bad for breaking the rules. Like, this is not the type of kid who would ever go out of his way to do anything wrong ever, but... Karen apparently didn't get the memo because I get a call from my mom today saying, hey, why did you not turn off your security system? Like, what? why did you do that? You scared your brother. And I'm like, well, <laughs> what are you talking about? And she says, well, he, uh, I just got a call and, and the cops are at your house and they're saying that the alarm went off and it looks like your brother was breaking in. And I'm like, I didn't turn on my alarm because I knew my brother was going to be coming over and I knew it would freak him out because he's so terrified of breaking the rules that I didn't do it, right? I'm like, look, okay, something's not right here. My alarm was off. I double checked to make sure it was off. Something's not right. I would never scare my brother on purpose. That's not funny. I know he wouldn't think it was funny. Like, I, I don't know what's going on. So I did get security cameras installed 
And I just wanted to make sure that nobody came in and armed the system. And sure enough, I'm watching the footage from my iPad, and I can see my brother coming and going every day for, like, the last five days on his bike, going in, feeding the dogs, leaving, locking the door on the way, like that stuff. I've got the camera set up. I can see that. But what I start to see, too, is from across the street, Karen, like, looking out of her window whenever my brother would pull up and go inside and then closing the window whenever he would leave, but would watch him for that entire period. And, and that was every time he was coming over. So, for whatever reason, every time my brother went to feed my dogs, Karen was peering out of her window like a creepy Einstein. I don't know. For some reason, like, hmm, this 13-year-old kid looks suspicious. Yes, it looks suspiciously like him, and it's his little brother, and he's not home, and he's clearly only coming over for five minutes, which would be a terrible criminal. Like, imagine somebody breaking into a house for five minutes just to scope it out like uh you know yeah i'm gonna break into scrubby's house i'm not gonna take anything i just want to make sure that his microwave's like high quality you know just want to get a quick tour that's just weird that doesn't make any sense but for some reason karen is staring at my brother out of the window whenever he's there like he's some type of criminal who's just going to i don't know single-handedly cause the moon to crash into the earth like treat it, it, it was just weird so at this point i'm kind of like all right i think karen had something to do with it so I called the police, not like 911, but like I called the office and I'm kind of like, hey, apparently you guys went to my house for a, a burglary thing, like a breaking in, what happened? And they said, we got a call from a neighbor saying that a kid was breaking into your house. And when we got there, we found that the security alarm was turned off and we didn't know if he did it or what. So we just talked to him and we found out that he was your brother, obviously. They were like, we were actually about to call you. We talked to your mother. She was listed as, you know, uh, someone we could contact about the house, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay, well, look. My brother is fine to be there. Can you tell me who called? And they said, well, it was an anonymous call. It was a woman who called in and claimed to be your neighbor and said that she was just looking out for the best interest of the neighborhood. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, all right, that's some Karen level stuff, okay? If any of my other neighbors would have tried to call the cops, A, they probably would have texted me first because I gave them my number and they knew I was going out of town and been like, hey, uh, is a blonde kid supposed to be going into your house or like, is this person breaking in? You know, the normal thing to do if you see someone that's uh, obviously not up to anything shady in the middle of the day like if my brother is a burglar what a bad burglar yeah i'm breaking in in mid daylight with his neighbors watching me and then waving at them and then riding my bike away multiple times a day at the same exact time every day like every other day so that way everybody knows exactly what i'm doing and hopefully one of them calls the cops because i want to meet my dad in prison he went to get milk 18 years ago next thing i know he's got a felony for armed robbery and is in prison like it's just not realistic of of me being a criminal so i get on Facebook and I send Karen a message saying, hey, I appreciate you reaching out and trying to keep my house safe. Can you please not call the cops on my little brother? Because I don't have enough on authority. Yes, she's crazy. I don't have enough to say that she's being uh, mean on purpose. Like, I don't have enough to be like, you called the cops on my brother to be annoying and try to get him in trouble. Can you stop? So I say, hey, I appreciate you looking out for my property in the neighborhood, but you know, can you please not call the cops on my little brother who's who's a kid? Like, he's just a kid. That's not cool. He's allowed to be there. It's fine. And uh, the response I get is something else. So her response basically starts like this. How dare you contact me after threatening to get me arrested for simply looking out for the neighborhood? Yes, because you breaking into my house and harassing me constantly, well, we're just going to leave that out. I just randomly decided to threaten you one day for absolutely no reason. Yeah, well, we're going to drop everything else that happened. Sure, whatever. Like, I can get over that. I knew she was going to be mad. And then she says, I don't know who you think you are to be hiring non-licensed dog carers to come to your house, but I'll have you know it's very unprofessional. Uh... I, am I not allowed to have my little brother come feed my dog? What do you mean non-licensed dog carer? Like, was I supposed to go in on deed.com and find someone with a bachelor degree and feeding dogs to take care of my dogs for the six days I was going to be on? Like, I, I didn't realize that it was so unprofessional for me to hire someone to look after my dogs that doesn't have a license for it. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry, Pendleton, my beagle, is sitting there right now going, huh, I might know Ryan's little brother. But alas, he is not licensed to feed me, and I cannot eat. I will now wallow away in hunger. Like, what, what do you mean? Where is I supposed to find a licensed dog trainer? And I guess it's unprofessional because uh, for some reason, whenever I'm not there, I, I'm just supposed to be professional and, like, signed notarized letters to Karen saying, can my brother please feed my dogs? And then she says, running a business like that is illegal out of your home, and I called the police to try to shut down whatever jig you have coming. The money you are making is very immoral. Uh, does she think I'm running a dog business? Like, I don't know what she thinks I'm doing. I'm running an illegal business without a license in terms of my brother feeding my dog. Like, I don't even understand what she's possibly going for. I'm going to be honest. Usually with Karen's craziness, I could at least follow a little bit, okay? I'm not saying it makes sense, but at least I can kind of understand what she's trying to say. With this one, I have no idea. 
So I message back, which is probably not the smartest idea. And I'm like, hey, I have no idea what you're talking about. My brother's just feeding my dog. It is not that deep, all right? Please don't call the cops on my brother. If you got a beef with my unprofessionalism and me running a dog carrying business out of my house without a license, you can beef with me about that. My brother is 13. You don't need to call the cops on him. He's obviously not a bad kid, right? Like, obviously. And her response once again was, I don't know that your brother is 13. I don't even know if he's your brother. And to be honest, he did look a little shady. Uh, to paint a picture for you, my brother is a 5'2 white kid on a bike who's a little chubby. I, I don't think this kid looks shady at all. I don't think my brother looks like he's going to run into a 7-Eleven with a backpack and shove n 90 cans of deodorant in there and then run out with stealing everything. My brother does not look shady. And even then, it's the middle of the day. He goes into my house for five minutes and leaves. What about that is shady? And second of all, just don't call the cops on a 13-year-old. Like, he looks 13. He's like 5'2". The kid does not look like a giant breaking into my house with a ski mask on, all right? You know, earlier this week, I had to tell Cyrus that you're not allowed to wear ski masks in public. That's not my brother. My brother's not trying to rob people. And so she just gets increasingly angry every time I explain to her that she didn't have to call the cops. It was just unnecessary and rude. And finally, after like 10 messages back and forth, I, I get this message, which is the piece de resistance of Karen. I have to get my Karen voice on. <clears throat> Excuse me, I find it incredibly rude that you continue to demand that I called the cops on your brother simply to be a nuisance and not out of the best interest of the neighborhood. I'm sorry you don't understand what it's like to be an adult and care for your possessions. You've come into this absurd amount of YouTube fame at a young age and I don't think it's doing good for you because most normal people would call the cops on an uncertified dog walker coming to their neighborhood to feed someone's dogs. That's pretty common and the fact that your brother doesn't have a license shows that you don't truly care for your animals. So yes, I did the call the police, but I'm not going to apologize and if I see your brother again, I may have to simply because just because you think it's okay doesn't mean that it's okay with the neighborhood. And then sign her name, which isn't Karen. Just to clarify, YouTube, if you're watching this, I haven't leaked any real information. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are following, but apparently, I don't care about my house or my neighborhood because my 13-year-old brother is feeding my dog. Like, this woman is so deranged. She thinks my brother is an ISIS member who's going to put a bag over everyone's head and tell them they're in a Febreze commercial. I don't know what's going on. I haven't responded since. I told my brother to go back today. If she calls the cops again, then I guess I'll have to find something to do. Maybe I can, like... RKO street fight her, you know, I'll get my brother a dog carrying license. I don't even know how to get those, but I'll probably get him one just to piss her off because at this point I'm just sick of it. But uh, yeah, that's the latest interaction with Karen. I know you guys want an update, so whenever I get one, I give it to you. Uh, apparently now I don't care about my dogs or my house because my little brother is feeding my dogs while I'm on vacation. And uh, I, I, apparently I'm just the worst person to ever exist. I want you guys to comment down below what I should do about it. Should I just let my brother feed the dogs? Should I tell him to stop? Like, what am I supposed to do? I've never had anyone get mad at me for such ridiculous things you know usually when i'm in trouble it's at least a little bit fair but it just keeps getting more and more ridiculous every time i talk to her but on that note guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did be sure to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought and if you knew subscribe with notifications speaking of notifications today's notification shout out goes to jimmy reagan 1607 big shout out to you for having on notifications i appreciate it if you want a notification shout out just turn on notifications send me a screenshot of my instagram at scrubby i'm gonna be back from san diego at as of tomorrow, so this is the second to last video you'll hear on this microphone. I know, I know it's different. And uh, yeah, uh, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do make sure they're hot, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. I'm out. Peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I promise you that I really am because I got uh, I got some pretty good news today. And if you are having a fantastic day, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. You'll have a bad day. Yeah, that's right. If you want to have a day as good as me, you got to press the like button. And uh, yeah, as you guys can tell from the title today, I actually had an interaction with Karen that thinks uh, I I'm pretty sure means that I win. Okay. I I know a lot of you guys are subscribed for the Karen stories and all that stuff, and I, I understand it's been a good run, but after today's little interaction that I had with her, I am 900% sure that I've gotten victory, and uh, you guys are gonna laugh as to why. For those of you who don't know who Karen is, it's my neighbor who just constantly was harassing me about being a YouTuber and saying I was a bad influence to children and just all that stuff, stuff that was none of her business. She's tried to get my channel deleted, she's tried to get me kicked out of my house, she's tried to do basically everything to try to ruin my life, and it just hasn't been working. If anything, it's just 
just been helping me more because people love the videos about her. But today, ladies and gentlemen, I am 97% sure that I secured the dub, all right? If this was a soccer mom competition, I'm taking home gold. I am the Michael Phelps of Dunkin' on Soccer Moms. And uh, I have a surprise at the end of the video that you guys are probably going to want to see, so stay tuned and uh, yeah, let's get into the video. So basically, the day I'm recording this, which is probably not the same day it's being uploaded because I have to get some stuff done in order for this video to get out, uh, I was I was chilling outside, you know, just doing my thing. Uh, I was actually in my front lawn just making sure that my gardener wired up our sprinklers correctly. We're trying to get our like landscaping thing going on and we've had a leak, so I was just trying to make sure that the leak got fixed and that way it wasn't leaking anymore. Yes, I know I sound like a 47 year old dad, you know, I'm like, oh, I was just trying to make sure that my garden was intact, but that's what I was doing. I sound like an old pleb and I promise I'm not that ancient, all right? I might be a little old, but I'm not that old. And uh, I was chilling and I look up and I see something in Karen's yard that I think has to be put there on accident, okay? I see a for sale sign and I don't know if you guys can understand the amount of joy that I felt, but I immediately feel as if 10,000 pounds of stress have been lifted off my shoulders. And like I said, I don't necessarily think it's real. Part of me thinks that it's a ploy for her to make me look stupid. So I see the for sale sign in her yard and I do something insane, guys. You know what I did? I, I go back inside and I'm talking to Grant. I'm telling him that the for sale sign's in the yard and he goes, you should go ask her about it. And I'm like, all right, this is probably a bad idea. I feel like going and talking to this crazy lady that's caused all these problems is a bad idea. And he goes, well, look, she either put the sign in the yard to mess with you, at which case you get content and she's crazy, or she's actually moving, in which case we're throwing a party, all right? Like, let's celebrate. So Grant tells me to go over there and just see what's going on. And I'm like, all right, fine, fine. I'm going to go see what's up. I'll see if Karen's moving. Um, and we'll see what's up. So I walk across the street and I'm in front of Karen's door and I knock and uh, I can see like some beady little eyes peeking through the people. I couldn't really, but I only assume that uh, that's what you see when you're looking underneath your bed for your sleep paralysis demon is the same feeling I got watching Karen's beady little soccer mom eyes peek through this peephole. And the door opens and like Karen snarls basically like a, an animal from where the wild things are. What do you? want. I'm like, hey, I saw the for sale sign in your yard. Are you moving? Like, what's going on? And she's like, well, it's none of your business, but if you really want to know why the for sale sign's in our yard, it's because I want to live in a classy neighborhood where people contribute to society and are neighborly. And you clearly do not have that intention. So if people like you are starting to move into the neighborhood, then you bet that me and my husband are going to be doing everything in our power to leave. Do you understand? Do you feel good about yourself, huh? And I'm like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm still trying to be nice, but the smile on my face is obvious, and I can tell that she notices my smile, because as I start to explain, I'm sorry you feel that way, she's like, look at that little smile on your face. It's that attitude that's driving good neighbors out of this neighborhood. I won't be the last one to move because of you. And, uh, you know, Karen, if you're not the last one to move because of me, that's fine, because, uh, joke's on you, because my next neighbors are gonna be absolute swag lords, you know, I can see them right now, pulling up with their moving truck with their shutter shades on, Kanye West himself is gonna be my new neighbor, thank you, Karen. But regardless, she starts lecturing me about how I'm single-handedly destroying the neighborhood, and, uh, I kinda let her rant for a little bit, and she stops, and I'm like, wait, how am I destroying the neighborhood? Because in all the time she spent yelling at me about how I'm bringing the neighborhood down, and I'm gonna destroy it. She never actually said anything specific. It was just a bunch of vague ones. Like I'm bringing down property values. Like I don't, I don't really know how me having a house is like bringing down property values, but okay. And her response when I asked how I'm bringing down the neighborhood might have been the most soccer mom thing of all time. She gets this super serious look on her face, like she's about to go tell somebody that, the, you know, their dog got ran over and she goes, I can't believe the disrespect that you have made to publicize my efforts on getting your vile channel taken down on your YouTube channel. I, that's just disgusting. And uh, she says some other stuff, but I want to analyze this first, okay? I'm going to go in like a genius lyrics breakdown. Uh, you've tried to get my channel deleted and looked like a crazy person in the process. And all that I've done on my YouTube channel is explain what you You've done. I haven't made anything up. I haven't like gone out of my way to exaggerate what you've done. You've just made yourself look like a crazy person. That's not my fault. I don't really know if that's effort on my hand to make you look crazy if it's just me saying what you did. Like, this is basically what she said, okay? <clears throat> I might have tried to burn down your house, but you didn't need to tell the police that I burned down your house. Like, what do you mean? It's not my fault that you were an idiot. Like, I, I was just doing what I was supposed to do. So obviously, she's not a ginormous fan of this. She gets very upset at uh, the fact that I exist, you know? Like, my mere existence makes her want to move, which is kind of a compliment to me. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, my power level is unlimited, but uh, do you have the power level to make an entire family move? I don't think so, you know? 
you know? You're not on my swag level. So after telling me that, you know, my YouTube channel publicizes her efforts disgustingly, she's like, and I've talked to the HOA, and there's nothing we can do about your little situation. Trust me. I've tried everything I can to get you kicked out of this house, and, like, apparently you own it. Apparently? I've, I've told you this, Karen. How would I be living in the house if I didn't? Like, wait, what, what do you mean? And also, going to the HOA that I literally told you can't do anything. Um, you're, you're surprised that they're not gonna kick me out? Like, the HOA exists to make sure that my shrubs aren't overgrown, okay? They're not in charge of who lives in the neighborhood. And she's basically just admitting to trying to kick me out. Like, very artistic of you, Karen. Fantastic. You're an artist. And I'm still trying to be moderately polite, okay? I might have been arguing with her a little bit, but I'm not really trying to make her more upset because, obviously, Obviously, I've won the battle, all right? It's like at this point, it's like dunking on a kid that's like 5'2", you know? Like, imagine being an NBA player and the Make-A-Wish kids on the court, and you just go out of your way to poster him and dunk on him so hard that he falls over. Like, there, there's no reason to argue with Karen, because I'm already taking the fattest dub in history. Even if I make her look dumb by arguing with her, I still win. Because in a month, I'm still going to be living in the neighborhood, you know? So I'm still trying to be chill, and I'm like, you know, Karen, I'm very sorry you're upset. I'm sorry you can't do anything about me. I'm sorry I'm that much of an issue, but uh, I wish you the best of luck. I wish you and your family luck, and I turn around and I start walking away. And at this point, you would probably think Karen went, huh, wow, what a mature decision for him to walk away instead of uh, absolutely dunking on me. He could have absolutely made me look even dumber. Ah, uh, wow, what a, what a good kid. Maybe I've been wrong about it all along. Maybe we don't have to move. Maybe we can become friends. We can build a super power tower team. I could start a YouTube channel. I could start my Karen story channel. But no, that's not what Karen decided to do. Instead, as I'm walking away, I feel a yank on my arm as I'm turned around to be face to face with Karen. And she starts screaming at me about how I should be the one offering to move, and it's disgusting that I am willing to let a family move. Like, excuse me, I'm not the one who's got a problem with my neighbor. You're the one always causing issues. It's not my responsibility to move. Not to mention, I was trying to peacefully walk away, and you just grabbed my arm and turned me around to tell me I was the one that was supposed to move? Like, you expected me to come ask you if you were moving, and then go, no, no. You don't move, my foul, my foul goblin, for I shall move. I cannot uproot a family. Like, if you're choosing to move, that's on, that's on you. I don't really care, to be honest. You can do whatever you want, but it's not my problem that you decided to move. So I, uh, I tell her, you know, hey, you know, I'm not gonna move. Uh, I'm not gonna move. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna move. And she starts screaming at me even more about how selfish it is of me to not move. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm not willing to uproot my entire life just to dunk on you. And, like, it's just not gonna happen. I, you've been so mean to me. Maybe if you were nice and, like, cordial and just thought that I was a bad influence and chill, I probably still wouldn't move. But you know what I'm saying? Like, who are you to tell me that I need to move? So, I go to walk away a, a, again. And she grabs my arm and pulls me around again and says, You need to move. At which point, I just looked her straight in the eyes and said, Sorry, Karen, and walked away. Uh, except I did, I said her name, okay? Her name's not Karen, but you guys get the idea. She is Karen in these story times. So I told her, you know, sorry, Karen, and I just turned around and walked away. And I could hear the rage in her that she pulled her me around and tried to yell at me again, and I just said sorry. Like, I wasn't mean. I didn't yell back. I just said, you know, sorry, but it's not happening, and walked away. And I could tell that she felt defeated. There's no manager to talk to anymore. She's gone as high as she can, and she's resorted to actually uprooting and moving her family because she just doesn't like me that much. So I go back across the street, and uh, we wanted to make sure that she was actually selling the house. We wanted to make sure that she wasn't just bamboozling me and putting the for sale sign up to like you know, just, just mess with us. So we go on Zillow, which is where houses go when they're for sale. And sure enough, across the street, the house is for sale. And, uh, you know, it, it's listed with the real estate agent and they're trying to sell it. Everything looks legit. So I think I might have actually taken the dub here. I've dunked on my crazy neighbor so hard that she's willing to move. And obviously, this victory felt great. I'm not going to lie. We may have popped a bottle or two to celebrate the absolute savagery that is uh, dunking on your crazy neighbor who keeps trying to ruin your career by just absolutely shredding her on the internet, you know? Like, that's a pretty sick way to get the victory royale. And regardless, after getting the victory royale, of course, I decided that uh, the Karen saga is coming to an end, and it really was the main thing that blew up my channel, and I wanted to find a way for everyone to celebrate. So uh, I called up a friend of mine who does art, and we decided to make a Sorry Karen merch, as the last words I ever said to her face were, Sorry Karen. So if you're interested in copping yourself some of those, the new merch will be at the top of the description, and it should just be below the video. But uh, yeah, it's been an absolute honor dunking on Karens, and I appreciate your guys' support every step along the way. The Storytime channel is not gonna end. 
obviously. I, I have more stories. I have stuff that I want to talk about. I think I'm going to focus more on multiple part series types of stories things because I just have more fun talking about them. But I do want to say a huge thank you to absolutely all of you. So if you do cop your Sorry Karen merch and you uh, send me screenshots of you guys wearing it or pictures of you guys wearing it whenever you get it, I'll follow you back on Instagram or Twitter or whatever you show it to me on. Because, you know, we got to be together on this Karen thing. And for anybody else who's interested in the Karen story, if this is somehow the first video of these you've seen, I'll put a playlist of the entire Karen saga at the top of the description underneath the merch. Because if you haven't seen the entire saga, then, uh, you know, you're just not as emotionally invested as the other savages who have been here from day one. But on that note, guys, my name is Scrubby, and I no longer have a crazy neighbor. I hope you guys all have an absolutely incredible day. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I'll see you guys soon with another video. I'm out. Peace. Oh, and today's notification shout-out goes to Gremlin65. Big shout-out to you, bro. What's going on, guys? It's your boy Scrubby here, back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an absolutely fantastic day. I know I am. If you are, be sure to press the like button. Otherwise, no joke, no scam. You will get bitten by an alligator. Yeah, that's right. There's an alligator under your bed right now. I'm talking to you, John, on your phone, on your bed, and he will eat you unless you press the like button. Some dude named John on his bed right now is definitely freaking out. So, uh, I didn't expect to have to make another one of these, to be honest. I, I really was fine letting the Karen series just fade into obscurity. I was like, you know what? I had the moment. The videos banged. It was a fun time, but it's time for me to move on. But, uh, Karen took things a little bit far, and let's just say that she fought a different one of my neighbors. And when I mean fought, I don't mean come to my house and literally knock on my door. I mean, she honestly, no joke, fought another one of my neighbors and uh, I got the rundown from the woman she fought's husband and I was like yo is it okay if I make a video on this and he gave me the go ahead as long as I changed their name so uh yeah that's what you guys are getting today happy happy Friday to you guys so Karen has basically left me alone since the last video things have been pretty chill and they've been trying to sell their house they've been like ayo dog I'm gonna pull my real estate agent up everybody's gonna come through and take a gander at the house and uh it's been fine I really haven't seen them much I haven't had much about them but about it like two days ago one of the kids in the neighborhood knocked on my door and said did you see that your neighbor got in a fight and I was like what are you talking about dude like no they didn't adults wouldn't fight in the street the only person that Karen would fight in this neighborhood is me but uh apparently that's not the case so I started to look into it more because the kid was like no they really got in a fight he fought this guy over there and I'm across the street from Karen but the person next to her her husband was one of the first people that came up to me after this drama started and was like, yeah, she's kind of a witch. Who cares? We got your back. None of us dislike you. None of us care about your job. So, like, don't let her get to you. It's no big deal. And they were always super chill to me, and, and I was super chill to them because that's how it goes for me, dog. If you're going to be nice to me, I'll be nice to you. I ain't going to start beef for absolutely no reason. I just think that's pointless. So I go over to this dude's house, and I knock on the door, and I say, hey, is everything okay? And he goes, what did you hear? And I'm like, nothing. Some kid told me that Karen fought your wife. Is that true? And he goes, yeah, but there's more to it. Do you have a little bit? I'm like, yeah, of course. If it's okay, if you don't mind telling me the story. He's like, no, I know you've experienced how crazy she is, so I think you'll be able to relate, right? And I was like, yeah, for sure, no problem. Problem. So Karen has been trying to sell her house, right? And whenever the real estate agents come over, the kid who lives next door, this kid's son has been like outside playing and whatnot. Because I guess they've been showing the house on weekends usually because some people are busy during the week. That's just how like life goes. Have been uh, busy during the week. So they haven't exactly had like a super easy time showing the house. And whenever people come over to see the house, the kid is playing outside. Keep in mind, this kid is maybe 10. Like he's a younger kid, young enough to wear he can like ride his bike outside and it's not weird but you know he, he's not like 17 years old okay this is a kid so the 10 year old kid has been riding his bike outside whenever people come to see the house which who cares man if you're buying a house in a neighborhood surprise you don't get to pick who lives next to you there might be a child living on your street in fact chances are pretty good there's a child who lives on your street right so no big deal whenever people come see the house uh, apparently there's this kid outside and the kid doesn't talk to the people coming to see the house he's just outside and uh, I guess Karen feels like their house should have sold faster because it's been, what, three weeks now since they put it up for sale and nobody has tried to buy the house from them. Now, I think that's because what they're asking for the house is way too high. They are asking double what I paid for my house, and it's across the street, and I bought it, like, 
two months before they're selling it. So they're already tripping if they think that they're actually going to get what they're asking for. That's why it's not selling. But Karen is convinced there's a deeper reason as to why their house isn't selling fast enough, all right? She is convinced that when people come over to see the house, the little kid playing outside is making buyers not want to buy the house. And Karen, I understand you're a delusional bat, but... Trust me when I say this, nobody who's going to buy a house in a neighborhood is going to be like, ugh, we would have bought that house for double what the other houses around it are selling for, but that stupid kid was on a bike. I can't buy a house where kids ride bikes. What do I look like, a poor person? That's just not something that people think of, okay? Not to mention the kid is 10 or 11 years old. It's not like he's a 17-year-old standing outside like, if you move in, I promise you that I'll break your windows every night. But regardless, Karen is convinced that somehow, some way, this kid riding his bike is a problem for her trying to sell her house right so i guess this weekend it's now friday but last saturday when people are coming to see the house karen goes outside when this kid is just riding his bike minding his own damn business like literally keeping to himself no beef not trying to catch the smoke from karen and in the slightest like literally nothing at all and i guess she goes up to him and basically says you're not allowed to play outside until these people leave do you understand me you're causing me so many problems you're not letting me sell my house it's disgusting i can't believe your parents would let you get away with this and the kid who is like 11 is like okay and goes inside obviously upset because some old neighbor lady just screamed at him and told him that he's the reason she can't sell her house like bro i think if i would have been 11 and getting screamed at by some old woman you're the reason i can't sell my house i would have been scared too so whatever he goes inside and tells his mom like oh i can't play outside and she's like who told you that you can't play outside right and uh he's like oh the neighbor did and she's like what what happened so i guess the kid tells her the story that he was just chilling riding his bike minding his own business and the neighbor came out and was like, you can't ride here. You're making it hard for me to sell my house. And the mom uh, had enough and was like, no, no one's going to talk to my son like that. And moms defending their kid are the scariest people of all time. Like, mama bear reflexes are a thing. If you mess with a mom's kid, you are going to catch the fade. It is 100% guaranteed. So obviously this kid is upset. He just got screamed at for like doing nothing but playing outside. And she's like, no, you can go play outside. And the kid, I guess, was like scared. He's like, I don't want to go outside. I don't want her to yell at me. So the mom at this point is like, my kid is not going to be afraid to play outside. I'm sorry. I don't care how important you think selling your house is. You're not going to make a child afraid to ride their bike in front of their own house. Like, if you do that, you're an evil person. Yes, Karen is an evil wench. We all know this. This is not new. This is like, everybody knows that Karen is in fact a wackadoodle with a weird obsession with just doing things that make her look like a psychopath. So the mom decides that she's going to go over and confront Karen. And sure enough, Karen is standing outside waiting for the people she's showing her house to to like show up and, and walk through the house or whatever and she goes Karen did you really tell my kid that he can't play outside and Karen condescendingly was like um yes because it's his fault that my house isn't selling and uh, when your son is inside afraid to play outside because some old lady yelled at him anything that she says you're not going to take any BS for so she goes no your house isn't selling because you're asking a ridiculous price for it we all know it you're asking like twice what our houses are worth nobody is going to buy it and she looks at the mom of the kid who she made cry and goes, well, some of us actually have class and take care of our houses, and that's why ours is worth more. You and your trailer trash family who ride their bikes outside can uh, go elsewhere if you really think it's going to be a problem. First of all, how is it trailer trash to ride a bike, bro? Like, what, what, what do you mean? What do you want an 11-year-old to do? Your 11-year-old doesn't have a Prius, okay? So, therefore, he's garbage. Like, the kid is, he's riding his bike. He's a child. And also, how is it trailer trash to let your child ride a bike? Like, Karen's kids, you know, when they were little, Mom, I want to ride the bike. Listen, Jeremy, do you want to look trashy, huh? You want to make Mom and Dad look bad, huh? You disgusting little turd. You want to ride a bike? What do we look like? What do we look like? Do you want to make me proud? Or do you want me to hate you? Because right now, I want to punch you in the face. Don't ever say you want to ride a bike again. Like, what What do you expect little kids to do? Of course they're going to want to ride a bike. What type of dumb situation? Like, it just makes no sense why she was so mad. But obviously, the mom, now, not only is her kid inside upset thinking that he's not allowed to play outside because some lady is screaming at him, but on top of that, just got insulted and told that she's trailer trash for trying to simply ask her why she told her kid that he wasn't allowed to play outside. So, she retorts back to Karen and says something along the lines of, loosely translated and with swear words taken out so that way this video stays monetized, Karen, nobody likes you. You do nothing but cause problems on this neighborhood and now you're making kids feel unsafe to play outside 
outside, you miserable wench. I genuinely hope that you get hit by a semi-truck that is labeled too big for TV, and as it slowly runs over you, you do nothing but scream in agony. Um, that's loosely translated. I don't really know if any of that was said. But basically, her and Karen go back and forth, throwing some mom beef out there, all right? Somebody disses somebody's snickerdoodles. Somebody disses somebody's ability to take care of an ouchie, you know? Just stuff that moms do when they're beefing. I don't know. I'm not a mom. I've never beefed with a mom. But I'm assuming... Oh, I guess I have beefed with a mom. But, like, you know what I mean? I've never ha I've never seen a mom rap battle go down, all right? I've never seen a mom versus mom action fight. So, pew, pew, pew. They're swinging on each other. Ah, snickerdoodles. Pew, pew. Oh, no. Ah. Uh, you make crappy cupcakes. Uh, your kids' birthday parties suck. Uh, like, I'm doing my best impersonation. But you guys get the idea. Basically, they're going back and forth. And Karen, I guess, has had enough. Because what happens next is, uh, what takes things too far? I guess Karen, and this is on their security footage, which I don't have access to because I don't own their house, you know? I wasn't going to be like, yo, let me cop that security footage so I can get some mad YouTube clout, you know? Like, I feel like that's just odd yeah I, I really couldn't have asked for that but apparently Karen pushed the other girl and said get off my property even though they were standing in the middle of the street and this girl obviously is not too pleased with the pushing and goes and just punches Karen in the face and I know what you're thinking Ryan violence is never the answer it's always bad to be violent and you know what usually I'd agree with you but Karen, you know, if anybody deserves to get punched in the face repeatedly, it's Karen. I ain't even going cap. I don't hope anybody gets punched in the face. But did it make me feel a little good to know that Karen got her comeuppance and punched in the face? All right, a small amount. Yes, I was more than thrilled about it. So now these two moms are fist to cuffing. They're throwing hands. They're trading blows. At one point, I'm pretty sure somebody got a metal folding chair just for good measure to make sure that it was a straight up WWE mom wrestling match, right? And uh, after a bit, the people who are coming to buy Karen's house pull up and see the owner of a house in fisticuffs with their neighbor, which does not bode well. You see, that is a reason they probably wouldn't want to buy your house. Your neighbor fights you on a daily basis? Yeah, maybe not trying to live by you. And obviously they don't know the backstory of like Karen's attitude or whatnot. All they know is that they pulled up and the neighbor is fighting the owner of the house, which is definitely not a good look, which in turn makes Karen even more furious. And she starts trying to explain to the people buying her house the situation with the neighbors which uh you know I, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Imagine you're house shopping, right? You're about to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a on a property, right? You're like, hmm, I'm gonna live here. I'm gonna have myself a nice life. You hop out the car to see what you're about to buy. And uh, there's a crying lady who's swinging on her neighbor saying, you don't understand. My neighbors are crazy. You don't understand. My neighbors are crazy. I think I would do a very smart thing, which is get back in my car, drive home, eat a solid bagel, and never think about it again. I don't know. That's just what I would do. Regardless, we were just straight billing and chilling. I'm listening to this story, and at this point, I'm slack-jawed, and her husband goes, oh, but it gets worse. And I'm like, how does it get worse from your wife fisticussing somebody across the street? So, obviously, Karen being the Karen, who has called the police on me for I don't know existing, called the police on Cyrus for I don't know existing, did what any fair mothered may I talk to your manager haircut having person would do, and went inside and called the police. Now, something very important to understand here is the wife of the kid who was riding the bike had got inside and went to her husband and said, I just fought the neighbor. At which point her husband said, what neighbor? And the wife said, who do you think? And obviously had been in a fight, like scratch marks all over. Everybody, everybody got wrecked, all right? The wife had scratch marks. Karen had scratch marks. I'm pretty sure at one point somebody bit somebody's ankle, all right? I'm not really sure what's going on. The taste of human flesh was exchanged, but... I, 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 I'm being told the story. I wish I would have witnessed it. That would have been sick. It would have been a WWE SmackDown double X collateral moment that I would have very much enjoyed to have been a part of. Uh, and that way I could say when my grandkids ask me what's the coolest thing you've ever seen that I saw two moms throwing fisticuffs in front of my house. I feel like that's just an experience that I wish I would have been able to have at one point. But hey, you know, I, I maybe I'll get to knock it off my bucket list another time. So uh, now, now is where things get crazy. The police roll up and obviously it's not a good situation. The mom of the kid who was riding the bike doesn't want to get involved. Basically tells the officers, look, I don't want to press charges. It's not that big of a deal. Can we just drop it? And Karen is like, you need to take her 
her to jail immediately. She must be arrested. She's a danger to society. You ever seen GTA? You ever seen GTA, officer? This lady is trying to play GTA in real life. This is not a joke. This is not a scam. If she is not immediately removed from the premise, I will do my absolute best to make sure she is continuously and repeatedly sued to the fullest extent of the law, officer. Do you understand me? So the officers are kind of like, what happened? And at this point, the husband is like, yeah, you're more than welcome to see the security footage. It probably got it because the way their camera was angled, it like angles into the street where you can see in front of Karen's house. And so they're watching it. And sure enough, they see Karen swing first. All right. Karen was the first person who shoved them. And uh, that's that's how it works. If you shove someone and they attack you back, the police go, man, she was just defending herself, Your Honor. Nothing bad was done here. Everything's fantastic. You're more than welcome to double dap slap crap out of each other when uh, somebody swings first. I don't really know how the law works, okay? But if that's how it works, then that's how it works. It's just going to be like that sometimes, occasionally. So there I was, barbecue sauce on my titty. Now, real talk, uh, as soon as the cops say to Karen, well, you were the one who swung first, so technically, if anyone's going to jail, it's you, her tune completely changed. She goes to the neighbor and she's like, you know, I'm so sorry, I guess we could resolve this privately. And the wife is like, dog, you were just the one who was saying that I needed to go to prison because I deserve to be arrested. And now, now, once the cops say, mm, yeah, that's not how it's going to work. You're going to be the one to go to jail. Now you want to play nice and say that we should just resolve it. How about this? You ever, ever look at my kid again, ever, and I will have assault charges pressed on you immediately. Do you understand me? And uh, Karen is like, oh, yes, I totally understand. It was wrong of me to yell at your kid, and I'm so sorry. Da -da 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 -da. Because as soon as Karen was going to get in trouble and actually face consequences for her actions one time, her tune completely changed. And the family just didn't want to press charges, all right? It's a long legal battle. You gotta be responsible for, like, taking a mom away from a family. That's not anything you want on your conscience. So I don't blame them for being like, nah, dog, we just ain't gonna deal with this right now. It's I. It be like that sometimes. Occasionally, you just gotta do what you gotta do to make sure your family's ballin'. And you know what? I respect it. I, ne I don't think I necessarily want to send somebody to jail either. I think that would be hard to deal with. So Karen is like, I, I'm gonna never talk to your kid again. What Whatever, no beef, no problem, okay? And, uh, <laughs> as you can tell, there's still more to the video, so, yeah, it, it gets crazy. I guess Karen's husband was gone for a bit, because the next thing that is an update is a knock on the door, probably two hours later, during which, uh, yeah, th this, this, this gets cringe, bro, this is pretty cringe, bro. Uh, he knocks on the door, the husband of the wife who got in the fight answers and says hello, and he's like, why can't you control your wife? It's your job to control your wife. Why is she attacking my wife? Do you think it's appropriate for your wife to be fighting people in the middle of the street? It's disgusting. I always knew that you guys were, like, bringing down the class of our neighborhood, but I can't believe it would happen. I always defended you when my wife would say you were trashy, which, okay, listen. I am not living in Bougieville, California, all right? Like, my neighborhood's nice. It, uh, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not living in Compton or anything. But, like, okay, I am not living in Bougieville. I do not know what they're talking about with you're bringing down the class of a neighborhood. I live in the suburbs, the most normal suburbs of all time. It's not like everybody here is Bill Gates building Microsoft, all right? That's just not true. So I don't know why they come at everybody calling them trashy is, like, Oh, you're trashy, dude. We live in we live in a neighborhood, all right? Like we are we're not living in the hills. We're not living in mansions, okay? Like it's just not like that. It's just not. So, obviously, like the guy, the husband of the wife is like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, dude. Chillax. Did your wife not tell you what the cops said?" He goes, "He told me that you guys lied to the cops and told them that she was the one that attacked you and we all know that that's just untrue." And he's like, "Look, your wife attacked my wife. I will beat you up if you do not step away immediately." And I guess Karen's husband at this point kind of realizes that uh, the husband of this is way, way bigger than him. So there isn't really a way that he's going to win this fight. Like, it's just not going to happen. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just not. Like, if I, <laughs> oh, if he would have fought, <laughs> that would have been, that would have been a classic. So, uh, yeah, Karen fought my neighbor because she tried to kick his kid or her kid off of the bike path, like, but not even, not even the bike path, bro. Tried to say that he couldn't ride his bike in front of his house because it was the reason why she couldn't sell her house. And to be honest, I don't think I would want to buy a house from Karen because I feel like all that bad energy stacks up, you know? It's not a good thing if the person you're buying your house from is a wackadoodle who is capable of basically nothing but evil doing and making people hate her. So, Karen, if you're watching this, I hope 
hope your house never sells, okay? Because it's one thing to harass me, all right? It's one thing to try to get me kicked out of my house, get my channel shut down, take away my livelihood. Oh my god, you are a bad person. It's another thing to attack an 11-year-old for riding his bike. Like, you're just an evil person. I really do not understand why you felt the need to tell a child he couldn't ride his bike. I hope your house never gets sold. I hope you have to live here so long that I end up moving. And in my place, another YouTuber who you hate moves in just so that way. You are unhappy for such a long period of time that your miserable existence continues forever. I want you to survive solely on hatred. I know what you guys are thinking. Wow, Ryan, that's an absurdly strong feeling to have. But you gotta understand, this lady has made my life miserable, and now she's attacking children and fighting people when they don't like that she's attacking children. I get it. I've made fun of kids on the internet. Sometimes kids be cringy. But I don't go up to kids riding their bike down the street, stick a stick in their tire, make them fall off and break their face, and then go, lol, why you so cringe, bro? But, uh, yeah, guys, there's an update on Karen. I really thought the saga was gonna be over. If you guys are new and haven't seen the rest of my issues with this neighbor, I'll put a link to the playlist with literally every other video I've made on it down below. There's a lot. It's a long list. Uh... It, it's it's pretty long but regardless guys I just wanted to say thank you so much for the support on the recent videos the Kyle videos have done incredible every video recently has done really well and I just wanted to say thank you uh, yeah I mean I hope I don't have to make another Karen video I'm only gonna do it if something equally crazy happens which I hope it doesn't but yeah if you enjoyed follow me on Instagram at scrubby follow me on Twitter at scrubby underscore 69 and if you're really 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 interested in supporting the channel head over to gfuel.com and and buy some G Fuel using code SCRUBBY because that hoe is 30% off for the next couple days. But uh, on that note, have a beautiful day. Today's notification shout-out goes to It's Pluto. Big shout-out to you for having on notifications. If you want a notification shout-out, turn on notifications. Send me a screenshot to my Instagram at SCRUBBY. And I promise that you'll get a shout-out maybe if I notice it, which I have a lot of DMs, so I don't really know. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. I'm out. Peace.